Samantha had always admired Henry because he was the most attractive man in high society. He was handsome, clever, and impressive. Even though he was a little cold to other people, he was much better than those playboys. Therefore, she had always admired Henry from afar, but she didn't dare to chase him due to their family's tense relationship. Even if she chased him, they couldn't be together, and even if they somehow did get together, she would become an enemy of her own family. Given the Wharton family's ambition, they wouldn't yield to the Ortiz family, while the Ortiz family wouldn't tolerate the Wharton family, even if Samantha married Henry. As a result, the four major families in Los Angeles didn't have marriage alliances. It was impossible. Now, after knowing that Henry was engaged to Ariana, Samantha grew more jealous of her. However, she could do nothing about it. She couldn't go to attack Ariana just because of that. She wasn't dumb. She would only dig her own grave if she dared to attack Ariana. After McKay and Samantha found out the news, they each told their families that Ariana was Henry's fiance. Their families already had a deep impression of Ariana because she became very successful at a young age and had expansive connections. However, they still didn't think that she was very important. They just avoided having conflicts with her to make things easier. However, now that they learned that she was engaged to Henry Ortiz, they were shocked. They had heard that Henry already had a fiance, but they weren't sure who it was. Given the Ortiz family status, they had assumed that Henry's future wife must be from a family with a high status as well. But to their surprise, it turned out to be Ariana. This girl was really someone. She managed to marry into the Ortiz family. Mosby had been paying attention to the news about Ariana. He didn't check the news himself, but he arranged for Lester, his bodyguard, to do it. He would be informed if there was anything new posted online about Ariana. Therefore, Mosby soon heard about her engagement with Henry. He was aware that Ariana already had a fiancé. When he called her the other day, it was her fiancé who answered his call. He had told the man to have Ariana call him back after she woke up, but he didn't receive a call, so he believed that the man hadn't told her that he called. He was busy afterwards, so he gradually forgot about it, but to his astonishment, Ariana's fiancé was Henry Ortiz. Upon thinking of Henry, Mosby was furious because they were bitter enemies. Although Mosby hated Henry, he was very impressed by his abilities. Now, he was jealous of him because he was engaged to Ariana. Mosby was sure that Henry was Ariana's fiancé, but he still gave her a call. He hoped to hear a negative answer from her mouth. At this time, it was late, nearly 11 o'clock p.m., so Ariana was already in her room. What's up, Mosby? Ariana asked when she answered the phone. Are you engaged to Henry Ortiz? Mosby asked straightforwardly. It sounded as if he was interrogating her. Yep, affirmed Ariana immediately. She knew that Mosby read the news about them on the internet. However, he was interrogating her. Why was he mad at her? The fact that Henry was her fiancé had nothing to do with him. As soon as Ariana said that, Mosby hung up on her. There was only a busy signal on the line. Ariana rolled her eyes. She didn't mind and ended the call. After making sure of Henry's relationship with Ariana, Mosby was in a terrible mood. He opened a bottle of red wine and tried to drown his sorrows in alcohol. Because of his status and position, Mosby rarely drank. When he did, he only drank a little. He needed to be alert when he did his work after all. Otherwise, others might take advantage of him. When Lester saw Mosby open the bottle of wine, he tried to stop him. Boss, you really shouldn't, he started to say. However, before he could finish, Mosby gave him a cold glance and he had to shut his mouth. Get out, ordered Mosby coldly. Lester gave a sigh. There was nothing he could do, so he could only walk out of the room. He was the one who told Mosby about the engagement between Henry and Ariana, but he didn't expect his leader to be so emotional. It seemed that his leader really loved Ariana, but unfortunately, she was already engaged. At this point, he just hoped that Mosby could control himself and wouldn't get drunk. Luckily, Mosby composed himself and stopped drinking after having one glass of wine. He thought it wasn't necessary to get drunk since he had serious business to deal with tonight. All in all, he never lost his reason. The truth was, a romantic relationship wasn't important for him. Besides, he shouldn't fall in love due to his position as the leader of an illegal gang. However, he had fallen for Ariana, 
and couldn't stay calm now that he knew she was engaged to someone else. At noon the next day, Clara and Hillary were having lunch when Clara received a call from her roommate, Kelly. In their dorm room, Kelly was the only one who got along well with her, so they exchanged their phone numbers. Shaylee and her lackeys had stayed away from Clara after finding out about her relationship with Ariana. Clara, I, I was stopped by a few girls in the woods. They refused to let me go. They want to see you. If you don't come, they'll beat me up, said Kelly in a trembling voice. Clara instantly got angry. She immediately figured out that some people wanted to cause trouble for her, but couldn't find her, so they caught Kelly and forced her to call her. Clara also guessed that the group of people might want to cause her trouble because of Hans. That was the only reason she could think of. After all, the rumor about her and Hans was everywhere now. Sure, I'll be right there, Clara assured Kelly. Since she was their target, she would definitely go to see them, or Kelly might get hurt because of her. They said you had to come alone, cautioned Kelly nervously. No problem, replied Clara. She wasn't afraid to go there by herself. After hanging up the call, Clara said to Hillary, All right, enjoy the rest of lunch. I need to leave now. What's wrong? Did something happen? Do you need me to go with you? Hillary asked with concern. It's not a big deal, and I can handle it. You know I'm not weak. No one can bully me, Clara comforted Hillary. She gave her a relaxed smile, but there was anger in her eyes. She was mad because those people used Kelly to threaten her. She didn't want her friend to be injured because of her. If those people directly accosted her, she wouldn't hesitate to fight with them. She disliked trouble, but she wouldn't hide from it. When she couldn't avoid trouble, she would choose to face it. I know, but are you sure that you don't need me? Hillary asked. She understood that Clara was a strong girl, but she was still worried about her. After all, it was rare to see Clara being so unhappy. Even if she couldn't help Clara with anything, she would feel better if she went there with her. No need. Just go back to the dorm and rest after you finish lunch. I'll be back in a while, Clara told her. Then she left without delay. Hillary gave a resigned nod. Since Clara stopped her from coming along, she didn't insist. On her way to the woods, Clara received many curious looks from passers-by. She also heard discussions about her. People were gossiping about her and Hans. When Clara arrived at the woods, she saw four girls from a distance. Kelly was there, being guarded by two girls standing at her side. The fourth girl was sitting on a large rock nearby. She was wearing a baseball cap and a mask. It was obvious that she didn't want to be recognized. She was playing on her phone with her head lowered, while the other two girls stood there, staring straight at Kelly, making sure she didn't run away. Kelly was trembling. She didn't dare to meet their eyes. Once Clara walked near, one of the girls saw her and cried out, Here she comes! They all immediately turned to look at her. Kelly felt relieved when her friend showed up. She knew Clara was very strong, so she believed that she would be safe now. Although Kelly was dragged into trouble because of Clara, she didn't blame her for it. After getting along with Clara for a semester, she knew that she was very easygoing, and she had already helped her a lot. Besides, it wasn't Clara's fault that she was dragged into trouble, it was the fault of those mean girls. I'm your target, let my friend go now, ordered Clara as she walked nearer. Those girls kept their promise. Once Clara approached, they said to Kelly, you can go now. Kelly quickly ran to Clara, but she didn't leave right away. Clara, I, I can wait for you, she offered fearfully. Although Kelly was terribly scared and wanted to leave, she was unwilling to leave Clara behind. Go sit on the bench over there if you want to wait for me, instructed Clara. She could see Kelly's determination, so she didn't force her to leave. Besides, she could protect Kelly. All right, agreed Kelly. She understood that she might be a burden on Clara if she stayed when they began to fight. Therefore, she walked to the bench, which was about 20 feet away. The moment Kelly walked away, the girl who was sitting, whose name was Gloria, finally stood up. She walked to Clara and glared at her maliciously. What's your relationship with Hans? She questioned. Because Clara had guessed that this situation was because of Hans, she wasn't surprised at all when Gloria mentioned him. However, she was very displeased with her tone. Who did she think she was? Did Clara's relationship with Hans have anything to do with her? Therefore, arms crossed on chest, Clara stared at Gloria disdainfully and retorted, It's none of your business. 
Gloria was surprised by Clara's arrogance and got angry. I'm Han's fiance, so it is my business, she insisted coldly. After that, she gave Clara a provocative look. Han's fiance? Clara was unhappy to hear that, although she didn't know why. She quickly composed herself. So, that doesn't have anything to do with me, she responded, as if she couldn't care less about it. Gloria slightly frowned when she saw Clara being so calm in the face of her question. She began to wonder whether she was wrong, and there might be nothing between them. After thinking it over, Gloria refused to believe that Clara had no special relationship with Hans. Was it possible that Clara wanted to ride on Hans' coattails? Therefore, she demanded, Do you want to be the other woman in our engagement? Clara's eyebrows narrowed in anger, and she coldly stated, Miss, please watch what you say. I have a very quick temper. If you dare to insult me like that again, you'll get punched. Gloria's jaw dropped in fury after being threatened, but she wasn't afraid of Clara because she and her friends outnumbered her. There were three of them while Clara was alone, so they weren't afraid. Unfortunately, they knew very little about Clara and had no idea how good she was at martial arts, so they believed that they could defeat her. If they knew how strong Clara was, they wouldn't have let Kelly go. Instead, they would have held her as a hostage. How dare you threaten me, Gloria spat angrily. Clara was merely a nobody in her eyes, so she couldn't believe that she dared to speak against her. Although Clara was friends with Ariana Young, that didn't mean that Clara also enjoyed a high status. If Ariana had been here personally, Gloria might have hesitated, but she wasn't. You humiliated me first. Do I have to please you after being humiliated by you? Clara sneered and mocked. Tell me, what's your relationship with Hans? Gloria asked again. We're just friends, shouted Clara. Since Gloria said she was Hans' fiance, she didn't want to be mistaken for the other woman in their engagement. Would normal friends go to visit the botanical gardens together? That's one of the most beautiful and romantic places in the city, Gloria yelled. Since you've seen the photos on the internet, you should know there were more than just the two of us in the park, right? Clara retorted. She felt amused as well as angry. If she had been alone with Hans, it would make sense for Gloria to think they were on a date, but they hadn't been alone together. Gloria didn't know what to say in response to that. Another girl opened her mouth at this time. There were more than two of you at the park, but that isn't enough to prove that you're just friends. It was a couple who was with you after all. Were you on a double date? She accused. Right, explain that to us, added Gloria at once. Do you want to force me to say there is something happening between me and Hans? Clara cried out, beginning to lose her patience. She already said that she and Hans were just friends, but they wouldn't believe it. Would they refuse to believe her unless she lied and said that she and Hans were dating? If there is nothing special between you two, why didn't you deny the rumor online? Questioned Gloria. There were a few actresses who had been the subject of rumors with Hans before, but he always denied that the rumors were true. This time, however, he didn't do that. Didn't that mean that their relationship wasn't simple? I'm running out of patience now. I don't think I need to give you a further explanation. I'll just call Hans right now and he'll tell you whether we're just friends, proposed Clara. She then took out her phone and was dialing Hans' number. No, you can't, Gloria protested in a complete panic. She ran over at once to grab the phone away from Clara, but Clara dodged her. Why not? Clara asked, observing Gloria carefully. She could see that she was scared. It seemed Gloria didn't want Hans to know that she was talking to Clara. You just can't, repeated Gloria. She was afraid that Hans would be mad if he knew that she came to see Clara. That was the reason why she was wearing a baseball cap and a face mask, so Clara couldn't remember her face. What are you afraid of? Since you're Hans' fiance, why don't you have a talk with him? Why did you come to see me instead? Clara questioned. She began to doubt whether Gloria was really Hans' fiance. I, I, Gloria stammered in panic. She didn't know what to say all of a sudden. The truth was, she didn't dare to ask Hans about whether he was dating Clara, and in fact, she was in no position to do that because Clara's suspicions were correct. Gloria wasn't really engaged to Hans. Are you really Hans' fiance? Clara asked, staring straight at her. Gloria panicked again and hurriedly replied, Of course I'm his fiance. However, when she said that, her voice wavered. This time, Clara was sure that Gloria was lying to her. If she wasn't his fiance, what could their relationship be? 
Clara didn't know the answer, but she could see that Gloria was very interested in Hans. Still, it had nothing to do with her. All right, well, even if that's the case, I won't let myself be humiliated when I'm innocent. Since this situation is related to Hans, I need to call him and make everything clear right now, stated Clara, pretending like she was going to call Hans again. Seeing that, Gloria rushed forward once more, trying to grab Clara's phone away. She looked determined to stop her from calling Hans. Unfortunately, Clara dodged her again. Without delay, Gloria shouted to her two friends, What are you doing? Come and help me! Once the two girls heard that, they ran to Clara. Kelly witnessed everything from where she sat. She instinctively stood up from the bench, but didn't run over. She knew how strong Clara was and believed that she could handle it. She simply cared about her friend's safety. Clara sneered, Do you think you can hurt me? In a few seconds, she beat them all down to the ground. However, she didn't use her full strength, so they wouldn't be permanently wounded. She only wanted them to know that they were no match for her. If they stopped attacking her, she wouldn't fight against them again. But if they didn't leave, she wouldn't be gentle to them anymore. The girls were all surprised after they were knocked to the ground. To their surprise, Clara was very strong and agile. Is she a martial arts expert? They all wondered. As if to answer their unspoken question, Clara stated, I'm very good at martial arts. I can easily beat up a dozen men. You're merely a bunch of weak girls. If you had tried to hurt me, I would have beaten you black and blue. If you're smart, you better leave right now, or I won't be so gentle in my next attack. You can't tell Hans that I came to see you today, pleaded Gloria. She lost to Clara, but she still tried to bargain with her. Her pride was ridiculous. Be honest with me, are you really Hans' fiancé? Clara asked again. Gloria blinked helplessly but didn't respond. That was enough proof for Clara that the answer was negative. Why do you want to know that? Are you dating Hans? Gloria blurted out, biting her lips and looking displeased. If you don't tell me the truth, I'll simply ask Hans, threatened Clara, taking out her phone again. Wait, Gloria stopped her at once. Clara stopped and looked at her, waiting for her reply. Gloria hesitated for a second, then said, I'm not technically his fiance, but we're childhood sweethearts. Both of our families want us to be together, so I believe I'll marry him sooner or later. Clara rolled her eyes and responded, Don't worry, Hans and I are just friends. I won't tell him that you came to see me today, but please go to talk to him about whatever happens in the future. Don't come to cause me trouble again, or I won't be so gentle next time. Gloria said nothing. She only looked at Clara with displeasure. After witnessing Clara's abilities, she and her friends didn't dare to say anything else to anger her. In fact, their whole bodies were in pain now, so they could do nothing. Gloria was upset, but she was also relieved that Clara promised not to tell Hans that she had come to see her. However, if they caused her more trouble, she would definitely tell Hans about it. Gloria didn't want Hans to hate her more than he already did. He disliked her because she always chased away other girls who tried to form a relationship with him. She just couldn't stand it when other girls flirted with Hans. She couldn't help teaching them a lesson and telling them not to bother Hans again. In her mind, Hans was her man, and no one could steal him away from her. Gloria didn't reply to Clara, but Clara didn't mind. She simply turned around and directly walked away. She went to Kelly, and the two of them left the woods. Once Clara was gone, Gloria's two friends went to help her get back to her feet. Gloria, are you all right? One of them asked. Can't you feel it? I'm in pain all over, Gloria shouted in anger. She could barely walk steadily. Clara's so violent, Gloria's friend complained. She said she was gentle to us today. If we had tried to injure her, we might have been more seriously injured. It would be very embarrassing, Gloria's other friend pointed out. She believed that Clara wasn't lying when she threatened them earlier. She continued, It's obvious that we didn't collect enough information about her. If we had known she's so good at fighting, we could have brought two bodyguards, and we wouldn't have been afraid of her. Didn't she say she can beat up a dozen men by herself? I don't think two bodyguards would be enough. And if we brought too many bodyguards with us, we might be caught by the university, said the first friend. All right, enough. Let's go to the nurse's office now, interjected Gloria. She was displeased when they complimented Clara, so she snapped at them angrily. Although she had to admit that Clara was excellent at fighting, she didn't think Clara's family could be as influential as hers. At most, 
Clara only had Ariana and Professor Gugino on her side. Without them, she was nobody. Gloria's two friends shut their mouths at once. They were in pain all over, so they limped out of the woods and to their university nurse's office. At this time, Clara apologized to Kelly after they walked away. I'm so sorry for the trouble I got you in, she said. Kelly felt flattered and immediately replied, Don't say that. It's not your fault. It's their fault. Kelly was from an ordinary family, so she abased herself a little in front of people from rich families. Well, you were threatened by them because of me, Clara pointed out in a resigned tone. She knew Kelly had a tendency to be meek, and she had actually encouraged her to build confidence many times. Otherwise, she could be easily bullied. Kelly had gotten a little more confident, but the change wasn't big. It took time to change one's character after all. Clara promised Gloria that she wouldn't tell Hans about their meeting today, so she said nothing. She didn't tell Hillary either, and also reminded Kelly to keep it a secret. Hillary didn't bother to ask Clara what she had to do when she left lunch early. Since Clara didn't tell her, it meant she shouldn't know. In the afternoon, Henry left Los Angeles and went back to the military base, while Ariana went back to her university. Many of Ariana's schoolmates had seen her photos with Henry, and they thought that her fiancé was very handsome. Other than the students from the four major families, most people didn't recognize Henry. They were left guessing who he was. Many people assumed that he must be from a powerful family. Otherwise, he wouldn't deserve Ariana, and she wouldn't choose him. Some people, however, felt that Henry might be from an ordinary family, and Ariana chose him because he was very handsome. People valued different things in romantic relationships after all. Some people cared about family background and money, and other people didn't. Kat, Candace, and Evelyn snorted when they heard the discussion about Ariana and Henry. If those people learned about Henry's family background, they would be scared. Ariana's friends knew that she didn't choose Henry because of his family background. They had asked her about how she met Henry, and she told them she didn't know his real identity when she got together with him. She only knew that he was a soldier, an extraordinary one. She also could tell that he was handsome and talented. She was completely attracted to him. Back then, she hadn't started up a business yet and was still only preparing to do that. Therefore, they fell in love with each other because both of them were impressive and charming. When Ariana arrived at the university, the afternoon class was 20 minutes from being over. So she messaged her friends and told them that she would go to the cafeteria to wait for them. Afterwards, Ariana ambled to the cafeteria. Because many students were still in their afternoon classes, there were only a few students wandering around on campus. Nobody paid special attention to her. However, halfway to the cafeteria, she encountered the president of UCLA, Calvin Driscoll. Calvin was walking with the dean of the School of Economics and several other leaders of the university. Ariana had to pass by them if she continued to walk forward, so she greeted them respectfully, even though she wasn't sure whether they knew her. Calvin happened to be good friends with Master Ortiz, but Ariana was unaware of that. Hi, nice to see you all. Ariana greeted them confidently and politely. Nice to see you too, Ariana, replied several leaders of the university. They were familiar with Ariana, so they didn't put on any airs and replied to her kindly. Although Ariana was just a student, she wasn't a normal student. She actually enjoyed a higher status than them. Even though they were the leaders of the university, they still treated her the way they treated their colleagues and peers. Are you Ariana Young? Calvin asked, looking at her curiously. Although he hadn't met her before, he had seen her photos, so he recognized her. However, he still wanted to make sure of it. Yes, I am, confirmed Ariana. Can I ask you about something? Calvin questioned, not avoiding the other people. Did you plan to apply for UCLA before you knew your SAT score or after that? Ariana didn't know why Calvin asked that question, but she decided to be honest. I was determined to apply for UCLA even before I took the SAT. Calvin seemed surprised and continued. Would you give up UCLA for any reason? The other people were confused about why he asked that. What did the president really want to know? Ariana was also confused, but she still answered. Not unless I was rejected, because UCLA was always my target. Surprisingly, Calvin instantly got mad. He said angrily, 
Well then, Juan lied to me. He told me to send him a sculpture, or he wouldn't allow you to study at UCLA. Ariana was taken aback, but roughly figured out what had happened. If she guessed correctly, Master Ortiz must have wanted a sculpture of Calvin's. He persuaded Calvin to send the sculpture to him because he had a close relationship with Ariana. If Calvin didn't agree, he would tell Ariana to study at another university. Calvin didn't want to lose such an excellent student like Ariana, so he yielded. He was tricked by Master Ortiz. The other leaders of the university also understood what Calvin was talking about, and they were surprised too. When Calvin mentioned Juan, they knew he was talking about Master Ortiz. It wasn't a secret that the two men were good friends. They also knew that Ariana had a relationship with Master Ortiz, but it seemed her relationship with him was much closer than they thought. Were they close relatives? If not, Master Ortiz wouldn't be able to threaten Calvin that he would persuade Ariana not to study at UCLA. They were confused, but said nothing at this time. Ariana rubbed her nose with slight embarrassment. She had accidentally revealed the trap set by Master Ortiz. Calvin would surely go to argue with him over that. However, it was too late to do anything about it right now. Um, I'm sorry, I'm afraid I've got to go, she said sheepishly. All right, acknowledged Calvin. He seemed to be in a bad mood after finding out the truth. He wasn't mad at Ariana, of course, but Master Ortiz. After that, Ariana immediately left. Once she was gone, the dean asked, President Driscoll, is Ariana a relative of the Ortiz family? She's the Ortiz family's future granddaughter-in-law, answered Calvin meaningfully. Hearing that, everyone was astonished. Which heir of the Ortiz family will she marry? asked the dean. He knew there were three heirs to the Ortiz family. The eldest one was Henry, who served in the military. He didn't know Henry's rank, but it couldn't be low. The second heir was Kenny, who was involved in politics. He was also young and successful. He couldn't remember the name of the third heir, but he was still studying in college. She's the fiancé of the eldest heir of the Ortiz family, Henry. But keep it between us. Don't tell other people, cautioned Calvin. Although it wasn't a secret, not everyone was aware of it. So he didn't want other people to hear it from him. It would make him seem gossipy. Sure, President Driscoll, replied his colleagues. They agreed and promised that they wouldn't tell other people. At any rate, after this conversation, they thought more highly of Ariana. They admitted that she was very successful at an impressively young age, but they still felt it was her honor that she could marry into the Ortiz family. After that, Calvin took out his phone at once to call Master Ortiz. Once his call was answered, Calvin angrily shouted, Juan, how dare you trick me? Aren't you ashamed? Master Ortiz was confused for a second when Calvin shouted at him. What are you talking about? He asked. He already forgot that he had tricked Calvin into giving him the sculpture. You told me Ariana is your future granddaughter-in-law and you coerced me into sending you the sculpture. You claimed that if I didn't do that, you wouldn't allow Ariana to study at UCLA. I just met her and I asked her whether she would give up UCLA for any reason. She told me she wouldn't. UCLA was her only target. Even if I didn't give you the sculpture, she would still study here. I don't think you could have stopped her in the first place, complained Calvin. He didn't realize that he was easily fooled until now. He couldn't help but be angry at himself. Master Ortiz chuckled a few times, but didn't deny it. Well, yes, it's true, but it's too late now to change it, he responded. He sounded very proud. You admit it, Calvin blurted out feeling angered by Master Ortiz's honesty. All right, let me buy you a meal some other day to make it up for you, but I won't return the sculpture to you, stated Master Ortiz. Fine, I'll choose the place. I promise I'll make you pay a lot for the meal, huffed Calvin. He understood that he couldn't get the sculpture back, so he didn't get his hopes up about that. He simply called Juan to complain about it. Since Master Ortiz wanted to buy him a meal, Calvin wouldn't refuse. After Ariana arrived at the cafeteria, she ordered some food and sat down at a table. After a few minutes, the afternoon class was over and students began to fill the cafeteria to eat. Evelyn showed up first. As soon as she saw Ariana, she joked, I thought you wouldn't come until the exam day. Ariana smiled and replied, Even though I have a photographic memory, I won't be able to understand the questions if I don't learn at all. I'm going to study very hard for the following days. I'll leave again after the exam is over. 
You'll be fine. I have complete faith that you can acquire a whole semester's worth of knowledge within several days, Evelyn assured her. She never questioned Ariana's abilities. Actually, Ariana wasn't absent from classes all the time. She went to the university once in a while, and she could quickly catch up on all the lessons. Even Evelyn was amazed by her efficiency, but she soon got used to it. Therefore, she believed it wouldn't be a problem for Ariana to master the knowledge. Ariana smiled but said nothing, because what Evelyn said was the truth. It was indeed very easy for her, but she still needed to spend some time studying. After a while, Kat and Candace arrived. Once they saw Ariana, Kat gossiped, Ariana, I read the rumor about Clara and Hans. Are they really a couple? When they met last time, Kat could see that Hans treated Clara differently, but she didn't think much about it back then. However, after hearing the rumor about them, she was curious about it. No, they're just friends. They happened to run into each other at the botanical gardens that day, so they walked around together. People just like to spread rumors about famous people, Ariana sighed in a resigned tone. If it was possible, Ariana didn't want the rumor to go around. Rumors weren't uncommon in the entertainment industry, and some stars even deliberately spread them for publicity. People would eventually lose interest in the rumors, and it wouldn't affect their work. Artists with fame might not care much about rumors, but it wasn't good news for up-and-coming stars. For a new actor, the audience's first impression of him or her is very important. Therefore, if people got to know Clara from her rumor with Hans, many people would believe that she became famous by riding Hans' coattails. Although Hans wasn't one of the A-list celebrities, he had quite a few fans and several thousand followers on Twitter. Clara didn't aspire for fame or wealth after joining the entertainment industry, but she had to be careful with her reputation and image. If she left a bad first impression on the audience, the audience would ignore her talent, no matter how well she performed in the future. Many artists in the entertainment industry had that problem. They were talented and skilled, but they had to give in to unspoken rules, publicity stunts, or even scandals. Even if they became popular afterwards, their career would still be affected by their unpleasant history. Kat nodded in agreement and said, You're right. Well, it's really difficult to survive in the entertainment industry. Clara hasn't even made her feature film debut yet, but she's already being targeted like crazy. She felt sympathy for Clara because she was innocent, but she was dragged into rumors with Hans and was strongly criticized by his fans. Hans' fans even said that she didn't deserve him. She knew that Hans was born into a rich family, but she thought love was much more important than money. Were people nowadays really that shallow? Since they aren't a couple, why didn't they post something to deny the rumors? Then Clara wouldn't be criticized, Candace pointed out. She couldn't help but feel like it was Hans' fault. Clara didn't do anything wrong, but he said nothing to defend her and left her to be targeted by his fans. Right, Kat agreed. Evelyn, however, assumed that they chose not to clarify it for a reason, but she didn't know what the reason could be. She knew very little about the entertainment industry. There are too many crazy fans and haters on the internet now, so it might not be a good choice to clarify it. It might prompt even more criticism of Clara. Don't worry, people will lose interest in the rumor within a week and it'll be over, Ariana assured her friends. Clara had said the same thing herself, and Ariana agreed that a clarification wasn't necessary. After hearing Ariana's explanation, her friends nodded and agreed it was a good plan. They actually didn't know much about the entertainment industry, and it all seemed very complicated. Well, I still feel bad for Clara, sighed Candace sadly. Yeah, Kat and Evelyn agreed. They also sympathized with Clara. Ariana felt touched that her friends cared about Clara, and she comforted them. It's fine. She's mentally strong and won't be affected by this. If anything goes wrong, as her friend, I'll stand up for her. Ariana's friends were very relieved to hear that. There was no doubt that with Ariana's help, Clara would be fine. It wasn't only the photos of Ariana and Henry that went viral on the internet. Hans also attracted a lot of attention online, because photos of the friends gathering at the botanical gardens were also posted and quickly spread. Although Hans wasn't as popular as Ariana and Henry, many internet users still noticed him and began to talk about him. All of them were asking who the girl with Hans was. Was she his girlfriend? 
Oftentimes, when a male star had a girlfriend, he could lose a lot of fans because he was already a dream guy for many girls. They wouldn't want him to be dating someone else. Therefore, many stars chose to keep their romantic relationship a secret. Nobody was sure whether Clara was Han's girlfriend, but many people believed so. If they weren't dating, they wouldn't have gone to the botanical gardens together. That was how gossip came into being. Before the truth was revealed, rumors were everywhere. After that, Han's passionate fans began to criticize Clara, saying that she didn't deserve him. They weren't aware of her family background, but they were familiar with all the famous stars. They had never seen Clara's face before, so they assumed that she was trying to ride on Han's coattails. Some people, however, didn't dare to criticize her. They didn't know who Clara was, but they recognized Ariana. Since Clara was with Ariana, the two young women must be friends. Given Ariana's status, Clara must be an important person too. Before long, information about Clara was exposed online. She was a freshman at the Los Angeles Film Academy, and she was from Baltimore. That meant that Clara and Hans were studying at the same university, but it didn't prove that they weren't a couple. However, many people still believed that they were. Clara was also Professor Gugino's student and a close friend of Ariana Young, who was the chairman of the Shetler Group. Given the above information, it was already enough to prove that Clara wasn't an ordinary person, but she was still being criticized a lot online. Some internet users would verbally attack all people online, no matter how influential they were. In fact, even A-list celebrities with powerful backgrounds would still be criticized, let alone Clara. Normally, those internet users wouldn't be punished for their comments, as long as they didn't cause serious consequences. Stars needed publicity, and they could get public attention by being criticized, so they wouldn't try to stop all negative comments. In the entertainment industry, they had to learn to bear the online bullying. If the internet users knew the real support behind Clara's back, they wouldn't dare to criticize her so harshly. Instead, they would be scared of her, because she had the support of the East Side Gang. Even senior officials in the government were slightly afraid of the East Side Gang, so ordinary people would naturally be frightened of them. After all, illegal gangs weren't afraid of breaking the law and were very cruel. If ordinary people dared to mess with illegal gangs, they could be killed. Internet users didn't know about Clara's connections to the East Side Gang for the time being, because she had no intention of making that knowledge public. Tony kept it quiet as well, because it might cause Clara a lot of trouble. After all, Sid and he were targeted once in a while. If they weren't strong enough, they would have been killed long ago. Tony didn't want to drag his sister into trouble. On the internet, many people criticized Clara for being calculating and seducing Hans. They believed that she didn't deserve him at all. Although they weren't very clear about Hans' family background, it was said that he was from a very influential family, so they all believed it. Clara and the others were unaware of the rumors on the internet right now, and they merely enjoyed their meal. After having dinner, they went back to their own places. Because the restaurant they ate at was not far away from the botanical gardens, Ariana and Henry walked back to the bungalow later. On the other hand, Clara and Hillary needed to go back to their university, and Hans had a car, so he would drive them there. He was more than willing to do that, of course. On their way back to the Los Angeles Film Academy, they took out their phones to surf the internet. Hillary was addicted to Twitter. She spent almost all of her free time on it. Before long, she came across many posts criticizing Clara. Oh my god, Clara, you're under attack on Twitter now, Hillary exclaimed, letting Clara look at her phone. When Hans heard that, he felt horrible. He immediately realized that he might be the reason why Clara was being criticized on Twitter. When they visited the botanical gardens today, some people had taken photos of them, and his fans must have seen the photos online. He was right. I knew it. Hans always drags me into trouble, Clara complained. She wasn't that angry, but she was still annoyed. She wasn't mad at the unkind internet users, but at Hans. Hans felt very guilty, since Clara was bullied online because of him. Right when he was about to apologize to her, she continued. Why would anyone say I seduced Hans? It's impossible. I'd never ever seduce him. If I was going to seduce a man, it would have to be my dream man. Besides, how could they say I don't deserve Hans at all? He's not even… She was going to say that Hans wasn't charming at all in her eyes, but she quickly remembered that he was in the car now, so she stopped abruptly. 
She was displeased, but it wasn't right to insult him when he was present. Moreover, those were the internet user's remarks, not Han's words. Hans didn't care that Clara was upset with him. After all, his fans had caused her trouble, and he was responsible for it. However, she loudly said that she would never seduce him, and she seemed disgusted by the idea. It was quite upsetting. Hillary was also disappointed that Clara sounded so upset. She felt that her words about Hans were too harsh. After all, he was the eldest son and the heir of the Davidson family, in addition to being an up-and-coming actor. Not many young men could compete with him, but Clara didn't seem to care about him at all. Clara was criticized on the internet because of him, but he still didn't deserve those harsh words. Clara also realized that what she just said went too far, so she explained at once, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to attack you. I was just saying that I would only seduce a man I like, and you and I don't really get along, so it doesn't make sense that I would seduce you. Hillary felt much better when she heard Clara's explanation. She could understand that her friend was upset. No one could stay calm when he or she was amid strong criticism. However, did she really dislike Hans? Hillary had a good impression of Clara and would be thrilled if she and Hans got together. However, she couldn't force Clara to accept him, and she thought that if Clara truly didn't like Hans, he should stop bothering her. However, she felt embarrassed to talk to him about that. Although she was involved in their relationship, she couldn't interfere in their personal affair. Hans could make decisions on his own, and he didn't want others to tell him what to do. Do you really hate me? Hans asked without any emotion in his voice. He asked because he knew that Clara didn't hate him as much as she seemed to on the surface. He was very perceptive, so he could feel that Clara had changed her attitude towards him. At first, she really hated him, but she gradually changed her opinion of him. In the past, when he annoyed her, she would merely punch him. Now she wouldn't do that. Accordingly, even though he wasn't sure whether Clara liked him, he was certain that she at least didn't hate him. Clara panicked a little and replied, No, I don't hate you. I just get angry when your fans attack me for no reason. There is nothing between us. I'm sorry. It's all my fault, Hans apologized. Clara was under attack because of him, so he had to apologize. I'll clarify it on Twitter later, he promised. When Clara heard that, she felt slightly upset, but she didn't know why. Well, it's not a big deal. Just as you said, it's just a misunderstanding. If you specifically clarify it on Twitter, it'll only spark more criticism of me. I don't think it's necessary. People will lose interest in a few days, decided Clara. She said that, not only because she was a little upset about Han's decision, but also because she was realistic. It was true that it might not do her any good if Hans posted a clarification on Twitter. It would only make people think that he was trying to defend her, and his jealous fans would criticize her more fiercely. Or people might think that Hans hated Clara very much, so he eagerly denied the rumor about them. In that case, his fans would still continue to insult Clara for bothering Hans. As a result, it was better not to say anything. They could just leave the fans to guess their relationship. Hans wasn't a big star in the entertainment industry, so he actually didn't have much publicity. There was entertainment news every day, so people would soon lose interest in the rumors about them. Hans put on a satisfied smile when Clara said he didn't need to make a post about their relationship. Sure, then I won't clarify it, he said in a gentle tone. Clara, however, didn't sense the affection for her in his tone. Afterwards, she stopped paying attention to the criticisms on the internet and changed the topic. Although Hans didn't mind that she had scolded him right in front of his face, Clara felt a little ashamed. After all, he was a nice guy who put up with her temper a lot, but she shouldn't take his patience for granted. Back in the bungalow, Ariana remembered the photos they had taken in the park, so she took out her phone. She had received several new messages. The photos were already sent to her email inbox, and the photographers all expressed their admiration for her after hearing about her achievements. They also apologized for posting their photos on the internet. They asked Ariana if she was unhappy about it and offered to remove the photos at once. Ariana didn't care about that, or she wouldn't have allowed them to take photos of them in the first place. In order to set their mind at ease, she replied to them and told them that she didn't mind. Anyway, she had no intention of keeping her relationship with Henry a secret from the public. She simply hadn't purposely made it public yet. There was nothing for her to be angry about. 
Besides, now the photos were everywhere. It was too late for them to delete them. The photographers felt relieved when Ariana didn't blame them for the photos going viral. Before long, McKay, Samantha, and some other students from UCLA saw the photos of Ariana and Henry. They were all shocked. They knew that Ariana had met Master Ortiz before, but unexpectedly, Ariana was Henry's girlfriend. It was too shocking. Although they had heard that Ariana was engaged, they couldn't believe that her fiancé was Henry Ortiz. Many people wondered how Ariana managed to get together with Henry. After all, they were from different cities and there was a huge gap between their status. Although Ariana was very outstanding, her success was hardly comparable to the Ortiz family's influence. At any rate, they were together now and Master Ortiz clearly approved of Ariana. After knowing that Ariana's fiancé was Henry, McKay finally understood why she rejected him. Even though Ariana was outstanding and had expansive connections, she wasn't comparable to the Ford family. Therefore, he felt that she should consider it an honor that he chose her. That was why he was in such a bad mood since the time she rejected him. However, he changed his opinion now because Ariana's fiance's family was even more influential than his family. It was understandable why she rejected him. She had a better choice after all. Compared with Henry, McKay wasn't anything special. Among the young generation of the four major families in Los Angeles, he respected Henry the most. Henry became a major general at a very young age, making him the youngest major general in history. McKay's older brother was in the army as well, so he clearly knew it was a very difficult road to gain that rank. One's family background wasn't everything, and it depended on a soldier's own abilities to get a promotion. Although soldiers could have many advantages due to their family background, they had to rely on themselves to do tasks. Even McKay's older brother respected Henry very much. However, even though McKay understood the situation better, after knowing that Ariana's fiancé was Henry, he was still disappointed. After all, Ariana wasn't born into a powerful family and was from Baltimore. How could she manage to win Henry's heart? Why was it her? Was it just because she was pretty and accomplished? He didn't think that was important for a major family of power. Usually, those families actually cared more about a girl's family background. McKay still couldn't understand why Henry chose Ariana because he didn't have a full understanding of her abilities. Although Ariana wasn't born into a powerful family, her own abilities were just as impressive as those major families of power. Moreover, it was just the beginning and Ariana had great potential to accomplish many things in the future. Gloria and her two friends went to have a medical check at the nurse's office. They didn't have any serious injuries, but were still bruised and aching for the time being. Gloria hated Clara, but she gave up the idea of causing her trouble again. Clara had already told her that she and Hans weren't dating and that she wouldn't tell Hans about their meeting. In that case, it was better for her to avoid unnecessary trouble. Since Gloria decided to give it up, her two friends agreed, because they were scared of Clara too. After Roberta went back to her hometown, Kenny didn't lose touch with her. Although he wasn't sure that he liked her yet, he felt interested in her and thought it was a good idea to learn more about each other. However, Kenny was often busy at work, so they didn't contact each other much. They mainly messaged back and forth on WeChat occasionally throughout the day. At night, they would chat for a while longer. Roberta understood that Kenny didn't reject her, but it would still take time for him to accept her. Love was grown over time if two people got along with each other. Roberta and Kenny still knew very little about one another, so it wasn't a good idea for them to get together so soon. In order to build a strong foundation for their relationship, it was better to take things slowly. During the following days, Ariana went to class regularly. After three days, People lost interest in the rumor about Clara and Hans, and it was quickly replaced by other hot topics. Before the rumor died down, however, Clara was accosted by several other girls, all of whom were Hans' crazy fans. Clara punched each of them, and they in turn went to criticize her on the internet, but their comments didn't attract much attention. After all, Clara didn't have much fame yet. She might gain some fame after The Legend of the Woodland Fairy was finished, the shooting for that was about to begin in a week when Clara had her winter vacation. 
Although the rumor about Clara and Hans gradually lost people's attention, the topic of Ariana and Henry was still hot on Twitter. However, there were fewer people talking about them now. During these days, Ariana had run into McKay and Samantha, but she treated them as if they were strangers. She didn't even bother to give them a glance and directly walked by them. When Ariana had some free time, she called Rita, Master Flores, and her other family members. Because Rita was on her way to a doctor's appointment, she couldn't chat for long, so they hung up after a few minutes. Rita had been pregnant for almost nine months, and the baby's due date was in 10 days. By then, Ariana should be on winter vacation. Therefore, she would go straight back to the Flores family's house once the semester was over. She wanted to be there when Rita gave birth to the baby. Ariana originally planned to go to classes every day until all of her exams were over, but something happened the next day and she had to leave the university again. Talia was missing. That morning, Ava went to Serenity Manor, so she didn't go to work at the Pavilion of Magic with Talia. However, Talia didn't show up at the shop either. Nancy had a sudden stomach ache, so she called Talia, wanting to ask her when she and Ava could come. However, she failed to get through to Talia and then called Ava instead. Ava then learned that Talia was missing. They believed that Talia was missing because she was over an hour late for work, which never happened. Besides, they had called her many times, but no one answered, so they determined that something bad had happened to her. It was possible that she might have been taken away by evil immortals who knew her in the past. It wasn't likely that mortals could abduct her. Although Talia was no longer an immortal, she was very strong compared to regular humans. Ava immediately shared the news with Ariana. She knew that a skilled hacker was working for her, and that person might be able to help them. Ariana promptly gave the information to Kay so he could investigate it. Before long, Kay had the result, but it wasn't satisfying. According to the surveillance footage, Talia took a taxi to the flower market. However, right after she got out of the car at the front entrance, the surveillance cameras were broken and she suddenly disappeared. They could get nothing from them. In that case, the abduction could have been done by immortals because only immortals had the ability to break surveillance cameras so quickly. As soon as Ariana heard the result from Kay, she called Ava and explained, I told my subordinate to check the surveillance videos. Talia reached the front entrance of the flower market, but the surveillance cameras were suddenly broken. I believe it must have been done by immortals. Although they already guessed that it might have been done by immortals when they heard Talia was missing, they needed to make sure of it. I'll go to the gate to see whether I can find any trace of her, offered Ava. Since Talia disappeared at the front gate of the flower market, that would be the only place they could find any clues. Once Ava arrived at the flower market, she sensed the remaining trace of the air of an evil immortal. She immediately guessed that it must belong to Talia's abductor. Talia used to be an evil immortal as well, so it might be her enemy. With that clue, Ava called Ariana right away and told her what she had found. I sensed the leftover traces of the air of an evil immortal. I bet that was the person who abducted Talia, theorized Ava. Although she wasn't 100% certain of it, it was highly likely. An evil immortal? It must be an old enemy of Talia's, Ariana responded while frowning a little. Evil immortals often fought against each other for resources, but Talia was working for Ariana now, so Ariana was naturally worried about her. Talia was no longer an immortal, and she might be in danger if her enemy caught her. Evil immortals were cruel and violent, and they weren't afraid of breaking the law. In case the air of the evil immortal completely fades away, I'll chase after them right now. Call me after you arrive at the flower market. I'll tell you where I am then, and you can come over, instructed Ava. Because Ariana was coming from the UCLA campus, she was far away. Even if she drove very fast, it would take her an hour to arrive at the flower market. It was also raining again today, so the traffic on the road was much slower than normal, and Ariana's speed was limited too. At this moment, she still needed about 20 minutes to get there, and Ava didn't have time to wait for her arrival before searching for Talia. No problem, agreed Ariana, then hung up. She focused on driving and tried to reach the flower market as soon as possible. Ava immediately used her senses to track where the air of the evil immortal went. Since the immortal was there recently, Ava could feel it. Therefore, after a short while, 
she made sure of the direction the immortal left in and chased after them. Twenty minutes later, Ariana finally arrived at the flower market. Then she called Ava. At this time, Ava was still following the heir of the evil immortal, but she hadn't found them yet. Once Ariana heard which direction they went, she drove over. Following the heir of the evil immortal, Ava drove to a remote place. About an hour later, she arrived in the wilderness. There was no one around and it was only a weedy road. Because the ground was covered by mud from the rain, Ava could clearly see the tracks left by a car. She thought it must be the car driven by the evil immortal. However, that was just a guess, since the tracks might have been left by other cars. Although this was a remote area, there was a road, so there might be a small town ahead. However, she had a strong feeling that the evil immortal went along this road, given the air she sensed. After driving on the narrow road for about 10 minutes, Ava saw a few old houses up ahead. A van was parked in front of one of them. Ava wasn't sure whether the van belonged to the evil immortal, but she didn't continue to drive in case she was discovered. Instead, she pulled her car over and started walking quietly towards the house. However, before she reached it, she heard a car approaching from behind. Even though the car didn't appear in Ava's view yet, she knew that it was Ariana. Therefore, she didn't hide and stood there waiting for Ariana. Before long, the car drove into Ava's view, and it was indeed Ariana's car. Ariana parked her car behind Ava's and then got out of it. How is the search going, she asked, walking towards Ava. There are a few houses ahead, but I don't know whether they're occupied. They're far away, so I can't sense the air of the evil immortal from here. In case the evil immortal is in one of the houses, and to prevent them from being alerted, which would put Talia in danger, I stopped the car here, explained Ava, looking very worried. I'll go with you, Ariana replied. There was indeed a distance to the houses, so Ariana couldn't feel the air of the evil immortal either, but she could use her jade eyes to see inside the house. Without delay, she did that. With the help of her jade eyes, she could clearly see the inside of any objects and places, even from a distance. Therefore, she saw two people in one of the houses. One of them was a woman in a black coat, and the other was Talia. Talia was lying on the ground. Her face had been cut several times, leaving blood on the corner of her mouth, and she was struggling. The woman in the black coat was looking down at Talia with an evil smirk on her face. She seemed very pleased and proud. Even though Ariana already knew that Talia might be in great danger after being caught by the evil immortal, a fresh wave of fury ran through her when she saw how miserable Talia looked. Ariana withdrew her sight and told Ava what she saw. They didn't know how long Talia could survive, so they immediately rushed over. The house was about 200 yards away, so Ariana and Ava arrived in a couple of seconds. As they approached, the evil immortal sensed them. However, she was enjoying the feeling of successful revenge and didn't react quickly. When she came back to her senses, Ariana and Ava had already knocked the door open and appeared in front of her. The evil immortal didn't know them, but she couldn't sense their cultivation levels, which meant that they were higher than hers. She was surprised and tried to grab Talia to hold her hostage. She wasn't sure whether she could defeat Ariana and Ava. Unfortunately, Ava moved faster than her. Before the evil immortal could grab Talia, Ava stopped her and they started fighting. Ariana didn't join them and instead, she ran to check on Talia's condition. After all, the evil immortal was no match for Ava, so she didn't need Ariana's help. Talia had already fainted, and her injuries were very serious. She was dying, but luckily she was still alive. It wasn't too late. Ariana laid her hand on Talia's lower abdomen, then put magical power into her body. The evil immortal wasn't at a high level, while Ava was a senior immortal in the yin-yang stage so it couldn't be easier for her to defeat the evil immortal. After Ava's very first punch, the evil immortal realized that she could barely fight back. Within 10 seconds, she had completely lost to Ava. Looking at Ava, the evil immortal was astonished. To her surprise, Ava was very strong and defeated her within a short time. What's the grudge between you and Talia? Why did you have to injure her so seriously? Ava demanded angrily. Since the evil immortal abducted Talia, there must have been a grudge between them, but she didn't know what it was yet. 
Although the evil immortal had suspected that Ava might have come for Talia, she was still a little surprised when it happened. She couldn't believe that Talia knew a senior immortal. She had no idea how Talia lost all of her abilities as an immortal, but it seemed to have something to do with Ava. It's none of your business, cried the evil immortal. Even though she was already caught and she was scared, she wouldn't give in because of her pride. Fine, if you don't want to talk, I won't ask you any more questions. We can sort this out after she wakes up, Ava replied in disdain and stopped questioning the evil immortal. It was clearly a waste of time to continue. The evil immortal looked surprised and angry when Ava said that Talia could wake up. She thought that Talia was mortally wounded. In fact, she was about to kill Talia right when Ariana and Ava appeared all of a sudden. Now, Talia was saved while she was caught. However, she was reluctant to accept it. Even though she knew it was impossible for her to run away at this point, she refused to give in. Therefore, she frantically thought about how she could escape. When Callista realized that she was about to disappear from this world, she screamed in protest. No! Nobody could accept being killed before they were ready to die. Callista was full of anger and reluctance. Therefore, even though she knew it was impossible for her to run away, she immediately turned around and once again attempted to rush forward. At the same time, Ava ran to catch her. Due to the huge gap between their abilities, Callista couldn't fight back and was easily caught. However, she didn't beg Ava for mercy. It was useless anyway, so she didn't bother. Besides, she was unwilling to give up her dignity. Inwardly, however, it was hard for her to accept this result. Before long, Callista was killed by Ava. Her lower abdomen, which contained her energy center, was broken, making it impossible for her to resurrect again. If an immortal wasn't completely dead, she could come back to life again if a master rescued her. Therefore, Ava made sure that that wouldn't be the case for Callista. Neither Ariana nor Talia had sympathy for Callista as they watched her die. If she was immortal, they wouldn't have killed her. Unfortunately, she was an evil immortal who couldn't be allowed to exist. Talia suddenly remembered that she had become an immortal again. It was very surprising. Well, it seems to me that being captured by Callista was a blessing in disguise. I somehow got a second chance to cultivate, she remarked gratefully. True, but that was a close one. If we arrived a while later, you might have… Ava's voice trailed off. Although it was good that Talia had a second chance to cultivate, she was still scared when she thought about what could have happened. After all, Talia was immortal before they came. Once she was killed, she wouldn't be able to resurrect again. Upon thinking of that, Talia was also horrified. You're right, she uttered. She gave a glance at Callista, who was on the ground and breathed out a sigh of relief. Luckily, Callista was already dead, so Talia's anger slowly faded away. They didn't want to leave Callista's body out in the open, so they decided to dig a grave and bury her. After it was done, they left. Because Talia was seriously injured, she needed a long time to recover and would have to stay in the bungalow. There was magical power there, which would be very helpful for her healing. Ezekiel didn't know that Talia had been abducted until they were back in the bungalow. He was very generous and gave her a recovery magical pill. Those kinds of pills were only useful for immortals. Because Talia had a second chance to cultivate again, she could take the recovery magical pill. After taking the pill, Talia felt much better but she still needed a few days to make a full recovery. For now, all she could do was rest. She barely had the strength to cultivate, so she had to wait until she had mostly healed. After accommodating Talia, Ariana had to go back to her university. It was about 6 o'clock p.m. when she arrived back at UCLA campus. She then shared dinner with Kat and her other friends. For the next two days, she went to her classes and nothing unusual happened. After that, it was time for their final exams. Meanwhile, after two days of recovery, Talia was much stronger and could move freely. Ava went to work in the flower shop for a few hours every day, but Nancy managed it on her own most of the time. With the help of her jade eyes, Ariana could finish every exam perfectly, and she always handed the test in before all of the other students did. She didn't mean to show off, but she felt bored sitting in the classroom after finishing her tests. She would rather go get some fresh air after handing in the exam papers. 
everyone was aware that Ariana was a straight-A student. Even if she was absent from classes for days, she could quickly catch up on the knowledge. It seemed very easy for her to master the lessons. In fact, during the two days before the exam, Ariana helped her classmates study, and they all had a better understanding of the test material after her explanations. Nevertheless, they were still amazed when she handed in her exam paper so early. They gradually got used to it, but they were still very impressed by her efficiency. The exams lasted for three days. Clara invited Ariana and some other friends to have a celebration dinner after it was over, before they all went their separate ways for the winter break. Kat also wanted to hang out together with Candace and Evelyn. Ariana didn't want any of her friends to be disappointed, so she asked them to have a large gathering together. They weren't strangers, so it wasn't a bad idea. Therefore, once all of their exams were over, they made plans to meet at a special restaurant. While Ariana and her friends from UCLA were leaving campus, they ran into Bryce Rutherford. Bryce was now aware that Ariana was Henry's fiance. He was very surprised when he heard about that, but he didn't think Ariana didn't deserve to marry into the Ortiz family. On the contrary, he had a very good impression of her. Since she was accepted by the Ortiz family, she must be even more outstanding than he believed. Hi, everyone, Bryce greeted them. He didn't change his attitude towards Ariana because she was Henry's fiance. Actually, he had been very nice to her from the beginning. Hi, Bryce. Ariana and the others greeted him in unison. Are you going out to celebrate being done with finals? Asked Bryce. Yes, Ariana replied with a smile. Oh, I'm going to meet up with a few of my friends as well. If you don't mind, why don't you join us? It'll be more fun if we have a larger gathering, offered Bryce. It wasn't a courtesy, but a sincere invitation. Bryce, thank you so much for your invitation, but we're actually going to meet up with our other friends. Maybe we can hang out together another day. Ariana declined. Sure, no problem, Bryce responded. Afterwards, they walked out of the UCLA campus together. After resting for five days, Talia had mostly recovered. She could move around, cultivate, and go to the flower shop with no problem. Nancy didn't know that Talia had been injured. Ava only told her that she needed to leave for a few days. After a week, people had mostly lost interest in the rumor about Ariana's relationship with Henry, and only a few internet users were still commenting about it. After all, not everyone heard about it from the very beginning, and some people got interested in it a few days later. The Mercer family learned about it later than other people. The Mercer family was Kara's family. They rarely paid attention to entertainment news, so they didn't find out about it right away. Kara was already aware of Henry's relationship with Ariana, so it wasn't a secret to her. Her parents, however, learned about it from Kara's younger brother, Caleb. He had been on vacation with some friends and just came home. He felt bored at home and spent most of his time on Twitter. Then he saw the photos of Ariana and Henry. He didn't know that Henry already had a girlfriend and immediately told his parents. The Mercer family knew that Kara admired Henry, and they also hoped that they could get together. But Henry wasn't easy to get along with, so they knew it would be difficult for Kara to become his girlfriend. However, they felt that she had the chance as long as Henry was available. Unfortunately, they suddenly heard that Henry already had a girlfriend. Kara's parents were shocked and couldn't accept it. Henry was cold to other people, but he was very smart so his standoffish character wasn't a big problem. He was also handsome and impressive and was from a powerful family, so Kara's parents were very satisfied with him. Given their understanding of Ariana, they didn't think she deserved Henry. In their eyes, Ariana was just a social climber. Even though she was rich, they didn't think she could enjoy a high status like them, so they believed that she wasn't good enough for Henry. Kara already knew about Ariana, so she had given up on Henry. However, her parents didn't know that, so in order to not upset her, they didn't share the news with her. Caleb was very protective of Kara. He felt that his older sister was treated unfairly. Kara had tried so hard to win Henry's heart, but got nothing in the end, and Caleb was furious because of that. Therefore, he decided to go confront Ariana. He chose to confront Ariana instead of Henry because he was scared of Henry. Caleb was clearly being selfish and not thinking clearly. Henry ended up with Ariana because of his own preference. Other people couldn't interfere in his personal business. Moreover, 
Although Kara tried to win Henry's heart, it wasn't Henry's fault that he rejected her. Caleb went straight to the entrance gate of UCLA to wait for Ariana. He wasn't sure whether he would see Ariana there because she might not leave the university right after she finished her exams, but he felt that she was more likely to leave as soon as she could. He guessed correctly, so he saw Ariana right when she walked out. Caleb was able to recognize her at a glance, partly because he had looked at photos of her, but mainly because she was too outstanding to be ignored in the crowd. She was like a big star and could easily be noticed. In addition, Caleb was familiar with Bryce and Kat, so he saw them first before noticing Ariana. After knowing Ariana's background, he wasn't surprised that she was walking with Kat and Bryce, who were both from powerful families. Upon seeing Ariana, Caleb directly walked over to her. He couldn't care less that there were other people by her side. When he walked over, Bryce and Kat greeted him. He had a determined look on his face, so they were curious to know what he was going to do. They were acquaintances, but didn't spend much time together, so they didn't think that Caleb would come to see them. Could it be just a coincidence? Hi, Bryce. Hi, Kat. Caleb greeted them flatly. Then his sight fell on Ariana. Miss Young, can we have a private talk? It won't be long, he requested. When Bryce and Kat heard that, they realized that Caleb had come to see Ariana. They weren't surprised that he recognized her, because she was quite famous now. Caleb's tone was polite, but Ariana still felt that he wasn't respecting her. He was just acting nice. All right, she responded. She wanted to know why he wanted to have a private talk with her. Bryce and Kat had a good impression of Caleb, so they weren't worried about Ariana's safety. The truth was that Caleb wasn't a bad man, but he was too protective of people he cared about. Once he lost control of his emotions, he wouldn't think as clearly. However, that wouldn't cause serious problems. All in all, he wasn't a bad person. Ariana told Bryce to leave before then. Then she walked to the side with Caleb. Bryce had to go meet his friends, so he said goodbye to the others and walked away. Once they walked aside, Caleb asked straightforwardly, What's your relationship with Henry Ortiz? Ariana didn't spend much time arguing with Caleb, but it still made her and her friends a little late to the restaurant. When they arrived there, Clara and the others were already there. After greeting each other, they began to order their food. They were all Ariana's friends, and they had met a few times before, so they weren't strangers. After a short while, they became comfortable with each other and started joking and laughing. What do you guys plan to do during the winter break? Kat asked everyone. I'll go back to my hometown and stay there until the next semester begins, answered Evelyn. I'm going back to Baltimore for a while, and then I'll come back to LA after New Year's, added Clara. The shooting of the Legend of the Woodland Fairy would begin after the New Year's festival was over, and the new semester would begin soon after that. Clara would come to LA at that time, which would be more fun for her anyway. She could hang out with Anya, Harry, and her other high school friends in Baltimore, but she would rather be in Los Angeles. I'll stay here in LA. I won't go anywhere, said Candace. I'll go back to stay with my parents for a few days. If there is nothing to deal with in other cities, I'll spend the new year in Los Angeles, added Ariana. Her home was in Los Angeles now, not in Baltimore. Where her parents were, that was where her home was. Oh, you're always so busy, Clara pointed out. Ariana's friends were amazed by her busy schedule. At such a young age, she had to manage so many things. Although she was very talented, that didn't mean her work was easy. After dinner, Ariana and her friends went to have fun at a bar, and they ended up going home at 11 o'clock p.m. Ariana went back to Aspen Haven this time. She wanted to go to stay at the bungalow because Ava and Talia had been staying there recently, but it was very late. Since she was alone, she didn't want to go to Mountain River Garden, so she took Evelyn back to Aspen Haven and stayed there herself. Back in Aspen Haven, Amber was still awake, along with her bodyguards, and they were having a late night barbecue. Amber was slightly surprised to see that Ariana was back, but she happily invited her to enjoy the barbecue with them. Ariana was still hungry, so she joined them. Ariana, have a drink with me. They don't drink and it's boring to drink alone, complained Amber, gesturing to Moss and Deb. She felt she had to drink when she was having a barbecue. Moss and Deb were her bodyguards, so they couldn't drink when they were on duty in case something happened. 
Although accidents weren't likely to happen, they could never be too careful, so they always obeyed the rules. If they were at the Chen family's house, they didn't need to be worried. Actually, they often drank with Amber when they were there. They could actually drink a lot without becoming drunk. In order to avoid causing any trouble, if they had to drink while in an undercover situation, they were trained to hold their liquor well when they were becoming bodyguards. All right, I'll have a drink. Ariana accepted Amber's invitation. They didn't drink much and only stayed up a little longer before going to bed. The next day, Ariana woke up feeling good and she went to run after she got out of bed. Amber joined her. After running, they went to have breakfast. Ariana actually wanted to rest for a while before going to the bungalow, but Amber invited her to hang out together. It was rare for her to see Ariana, and Ariana was on vacation now. Although she had other friends who lived in LA as well, like Lori and Joelle, they needed to work and didn't have a lot of free time. Thus, Amber had to spend most of her time with Moss and Deb, but because they had been by her side for years, she felt a little bored being with them all the time. Ariana wasn't in a rush to go to the bungalow, and she indeed hadn't had fun with Amber for a long time, so she agreed. The two girls decided to go to a shopping mall, which was a place where it was easy to run into familiar faces. Shortly after Ariana and Amber walked inside, they ran into someone that Amber knew, but who was a stranger to Ariana. He was a man about 27 years old, he was handsome, but looked a little haggard. There was a woman standing arm in arm with him who was beautiful, but she looked like she might be an escort. That was the first impression Ariana and Amber had of her, but they wouldn't say that aloud. If they judged the woman from her appearance, it would be offensive. However, when Amber saw the man, her eyebrows narrowed and her expression showed clear hatred. She obviously wasn't happy to see him. As soon as the man saw Amber, he panicked a little and pushed away the woman's arm, as if he didn't want Amber to misunderstand them. Then, right after he got rid of the woman's arm, he walked to Amber and said, Hi Amber, what a coincidence. Um, this is my cousin. My mom asked me to shop with her. As he was talking with Amber, his eyes wandered to Ariana, and he was stunned by her beauty. In fact, he was leering at her, which was quite disgusting. Oh, replied Amber flatly. She wasn't interested at all. Without delay, she pulled Ariana's arm, trying to leave. The man, however, thought that Amber was mad at him and stopped her at once. Amber, I wasn't lying, he exclaimed. Mr. Schubert, I don't care whether you are lying or not. I'm going to shop with my friend. Please move out of my way, replied Amber coldly, curbing her anger. This man, Aaron Schubert, was a friend of Lori's, and they had met each other at parties and gatherings several times before so Amber didn't want to embarrass him, even though she didn't like him. Aaron was displeased with Amber's cold attitude towards him. He felt that he had been very sincere and chased Amber for a long time, but she still gave him a cold shoulder. He protested, Amber, you know I... Before he could finish, Amber interrupted, Mr. Schubert, it's totally up to you how you want to treat me, but you can't ask me to treat you in a certain way. You're just a friend of my friend. Please don't make me hate you. Aaron became angrier when he heard that. He was about to say something, but the woman next to him opened her mouth first. Come on, you should be flattered that Aaron likes you. How dare you say that to him? Who do you think you are? She angrily criticized. The woman was in fact an escort who Aaron hired, but she actually dreamed about being the girlfriend of a man like him. Amber, on the other hand, rejected Aaron when he chased her. It was completely insane in the woman's eyes. Who do you think you are? You have no position to judge me. I don't like him. And to be honest with you, my boyfriend is much better than him, Amber retorted, turning to glare at the woman. The woman was annoying and tried to humiliate her, and Amber wouldn't tolerate that. The woman took a step back and blinked self-consciously. She didn't know what to say in response to that. Aaron knew that Amber already had a boyfriend, but he didn't know who the man was. In fact, he didn't care whether she had a boyfriend or not. He would pursue any woman he liked, whether the woman was single or not. It wasn't because he wanted them to be his girlfriend, but because he wanted to be with lots of women. The only women he stayed away from were married women. If his friends learned that he got together with a married woman, they would never let him live it down. However, if he could steal a girl away from another man, he would be very proud, because it proved that he was very charming. Nowadays, Almost everyone has dated and been with a few men or women before. 
Aaron couldn't care less about it, since he had been with countless women. As for himself, he wouldn't stop playing around. He always said that every man plays around. He was a stereotypical playboy. Once he heard that Amber's boyfriend was much better than him, his pride was hurt, and he felt angry. He really wanted to know who the man was. Since you said that your boyfriend is much better than me, tell me who he is. Do I know him? If he's really much better than me, he must be one of the heirs in high society. I might not know every important heir in Los Angeles, but I do know most of them, bragged Aaron. He deliberately said that Amber's boyfriend must be a high society heir because he honestly didn't believe it could be true. He simply wanted to embarrass her. Although Amber was very beautiful, she was from Singapore. She had no business or connections in LA, so it was impossible for her to know quality men. Even if she managed to meet them, they wouldn't choose her. Nowadays, a beautiful appearance isn't rare, and one's family background mattered a lot. Aaron's family wasn't one of the richest families in the city, but they were quite wealthy and well-connected. Given what he knew about Lori's family background, he felt it was very lucky that they could meet him, so he refused to believe that Amber could be dating someone better than him. The woman next to Aaron got excited once she heard that he knew two-thirds of the important heirs in Los Angeles. If Aaron could introduce one of them to her, her dream would come true. However, she knew it was impossible. She wasn't Aaron's girlfriend. He only paid her to be with him. He wouldn't introduce her to another wealthy man. In order to stop Aaron from bothering her, Amber admitted, Since you want to know, I can tell you. His name is Gerald Jordan. What? Aaron gasped. He had definitely heard of Gerald, but Gerald didn't know him. However, how did Amber manage to start dating Gerald? She must be lying. Aaron didn't believe that she could win Gerald's heart. Ridiculous. Do you think I'll believe that? Gerald is far out of your league. It's impossible that he would choose you, Aaron sneered. The woman next to Aaron had also heard of Gerald, and she rounded her eyes in shock too. Although it wasn't proven that it was true, she still got jealous of Amber. It seemed that Amber was a lot luckier than her. Amber didn't only attract Aaron's attention, but also became Gerald's girlfriend. Amber wasn't angry that Aaron didn't believe her at first. She only felt that the situation was ridiculously funny, so she sneered. You can go to ask Lori about it if you don't believe me. Although in Aaron's eyes, there was a huge gap between her and Gerald, Amber felt her family and Gerald's family enjoyed the same high status. In fact, the Chen family was more influential than the Jordan family to some extent. After all, the Chen family was involved in both legal and illegal businesses in Singapore. Everyone had to respect the Chen family, whether it was the authorities or the rich. Therefore, Amber didn't think that she was showing off when she told other people that her boyfriend was Gerald. If she told them her family background, she would really be showing off. Aaron was disappointed. Could it really be true? If it wasn't, Amber probably wouldn't tell him to ask Lori about it. If it was true, would Gerald get mad at him for bothering Amber? Aaron shuddered at the thought, because he was very scared of Gerald. Upon thinking it over, however, he was still reluctant to believe that Amber's boyfriend was Gerald. Even if Lori claimed it was true, Amber had a close relationship with her, so she would surely lie for her. Although Aaron tried to rationalize that it was false, he was mostly convinced. It was just hard for him to accept it. At this time, Joelle arrived. Amber had called Joelle and invited her to shop with her and Ariana at the mall, but Joelle was delayed and came a while later. Upon seeing them, Joelle ran over. Hi, Amber and Ariana, she called out. Joelle didn't know Aaron, but Aaron knew her. He had actually seen her more times than he had seen Gerald. He had only met Gerald twice at parties because Gerald rarely took part in high society events. Joelle, on the other hand, was present very often, so he was able to see her several times. However, he had only seen her from a distance, and he didn't dare to strike up a conversation with her due to the huge gap between their statuses. As a result, when Aaron saw Joelle's attitude towards Amber, he realized that she must be telling the truth. Even though the woman next to Aaron didn't know Joelle, she could see that Amber was really Gerald's girlfriend, given Aaron's reaction. Therefore, she was filled with jealousy. Joelle gave a glance at Aaron and asked, Is this your friend? No, we should go now, replied Amber quickly. Then she ignored Aaron and left with her friends. Joelle could see that something unpleasant had happened between them, but it wasn't the right time to ask about that now. 
so she walked away with the others. Aaron didn't dare to stop them this time, because he was unwilling to offend the Jordan family. Now, he was only worried that Amber might tell Gerald about what he had done today. If Gerald learned about his behavior, he might get even with him. At this moment, Aaron was irritated, so he walked straight out of the shopping mall, leaving the woman behind. The woman understood that Aaron was in a terrible mood, and she didn't dare to bother him. She was quite upset that he didn't buy clothes and jewelry for her today, but since she wasn't his real girlfriend, she could do nothing about it. What was that about? Joel asked when they had walked far away. Just a friend of my friend. I met him a few times, but we don't really know each other. He's a terrible man, so I don't want to talk to him, muttered Amber. Joel wasn't born yesterday, so Amber couldn't fool her by saying that nothing had happened. Oh, I see. Joel accepted her explanation and didn't ask about it further. They walked around until it was time for lunch, then went to a restaurant to eat. After that, they continued to shop. Most women couldn't help but love shopping. Whether they needed clothes or not, they always wanted more. After shopping for a few hours, Ariana and her friends all bought some clothes, shoes, and jewelry. Although Ariana had her own clothing line, that didn't mean she had to wear Aurora brand clothes all the time. She would get bored if she wore the same brand for a long time. As for jewelry, Ariana wasn't very interested in it. She had a whole set of jade jewelry made from the king's green variety of jade, but she only wore the necklace on special occasions. Henry also gave her a lot of jewelry, but she felt it wasn't convenient to wear bracelets. After all, she often fought with other people, and the bracelets could be easily broken. Therefore, she put them in her telepathic eye space, and she would wear them when it was necessary. Whenever they walked around in a shopping mall, they often ran into familiar faces. Amber ran into someone she knew earlier, and next, Joelle saw some acquaintances. In a luxury jewelry store, they met a mother and a daughter. Because the woman took very good care of her skin, she looked much younger than her age. Her daughter was the same age as Joelle. Oh, hi Joelle, what a coincidence, I didn't expect to see you here. The woman greeted Joelle with a broad smile, then she turned to look at Ariana and Amber. She was amazed by the two beautiful girls. Although she had seen many pretty girls before, Ariana and Amber were prettier than any of the girls she had ever met, so she was surprised by their astounding beauty. However, when the woman's daughter saw Amber and Ariana, she looked jealous. She was beautiful too, but her appearance showed what kind of person she was. She looked snobbish and mean. Besides, the jealousy in her eyes proved that she wasn't a kind and friendly person. Nice people wouldn't be jealous just because other people were better looking than them. Only snobbish people hated being overshadowed. Hi, Joelle, the young woman greeted Joelle. Her voice was very gentle, but sounded insincere. Hi, Mrs. Fleming and Sarah. Joelle politely greeted them. The Fleming family and Joelle's family knew each other, so they weren't strangers. How are your mother and aunt doing recently? asked Mrs. Fleming. They are very well, answered Joelle. Your cousin Gerald is still single. I bet your aunt must be very anxious about that, right? Mrs. Fleming asked with concern, but she was actually trying to get some useful information. Amber frowned. She understood why Mrs. Fleming asked that question, and so did Ariana. Joelle wasn't dumb either, and she knew what Mrs. Fleming wanted to hear. Right when Joelle was about to say something, Mrs. Fleming continued. Although Gerald is still young, many people his age already have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, it's understandable that your aunt is worried about his future. I can relate, because Sarah is also single, and she's already 25 this year. By now, Amber and Ariana were positive that Mrs. Fleming was asking about this because she wanted Gerald to be her daughter's boyfriend. Amber was a little displeased, but wasn't mad. After all, Mrs. Fleming didn't know that Gerald already had a girlfriend, and his girlfriend was standing in the room. Even if she was aware of it, it wouldn't change anything because Gerald obviously wasn't interested in Sarah. Thank you so much for your concern about Gerald, Mrs. Fleming. Actually, he already has a girlfriend, and my aunt is very satisfied with his choice, Joelle informed her. She knew that Mrs. Fleming wanted Gerald to date her daughter, and Sarah had tried to attract his attention. Unfortunately, Gerald had no interest in her. Even if Joelle had a good impression of Sarah, it was Gerald's personal affair after all. As an outsider, she couldn't interfere. 
All the families that were familiar with the Jordan family had tried to introduce their daughters to Gerald at some point because he was the only single man in the Jordan family. Because they were in the same circle, the Jordan family didn't stop them from introducing girls to Gerald, but it was up to him whether he wanted to choose a girlfriend from among them. If either of them were unwilling to be together, their parents wouldn't force them. Sarah had failed to attract Gerald's attention, but she didn't give up. After all, Gerald was very outstanding in almost every aspect. She could hardly let him go. Both Mrs. Fleming and Sarah were upset when they heard Joelle's response. What? Gerald already has a girlfriend? Mrs. Fleming exclaimed. She was disappointed, but she immediately realized that she shouldn't forget her manners, so she acted happy for Mrs. Jordan. Oh, I'm so happy for your aunt. But who is Gerald's girlfriend? She asked. Um... Well, she's not from Los Angeles, but Singapore, so you wouldn't know her, explained Joelle. Oh, what does her family do? asked Mrs. Fleming. She wanted to know whether the girl's family was more influential than the Fleming family. If not, it would be harder for her to accept the truth. If it was, she would feel better, because it would make sense. Joelle understood what Mrs. Fleming wanted to know, but she actually didn't know much about Amber's family. Thus, she replied, I don't know much but I'm sure her family is no worse than our family. My aunt even said that Gerald should be honored that he could win the girl's heart. Joelle wasn't deliberately lavishing praise on Amber's family, but she wanted to make Mrs. Fleming give up. Mrs. Fleming and Sarah were surprised. Since the girl's family seemed to be just as important as the Jordan family, they couldn't judge. Well, love is unconditional. I don't think anyone should feel honored to date someone just because of their family background. It's not a business alliance after all, Sarah blurted out at this moment. She was actually implying that Gerald got together with his girlfriend because of her family background. Afterwards, she added, I bet Gerald's girlfriend must be very pretty. He's extraordinarily handsome after all. Sarah's words were contradictory. Joelle didn't think much about that, but Amber and Ariana understood her implication. Therefore, Amber retorted, If you think love is unconditional, why do you care about appearance? Don't you think neither family background nor appearance is important as long as there is true love in a relationship? When Joelle heard that, she suddenly realized that Sarah's words didn't make sense, but she wasn't sure whether Sarah said it on purpose. Sarah was displeased when Amber embarrassed her. How could this woman easily see through her? Finally, Joelle pointed at Amber and revealed, Actually, this is Gerald's girlfriend. Sarah, do you think she matches Gerald? What? Sarah gasped. Both she and her mother were astonished. To their surprise, this woman turned out to be Gerald's girlfriend. All of a sudden, they felt embarrassed for what they just said. They just asked about Amber's family background and appearance right in front of her. It was really embarrassing. Besides, Amber was extremely beautiful, she and Gerald were a perfect couple. Nice to meet you, Amber politely greeted Mrs. Fleming and Sarah, but the meaningful smile on her face made them feel more embarrassed. They felt as if they made a joke of themselves. However, Amber greeted them of her own accord, so they had to respond or they would seem rude. Therefore, Mrs. Fleming and Sarah forced a smile and replied to Amber in unison, Nice to meet you. They seemed polite on the surface, but they were actually very displeased. Sarah was extremely jealous of Amber now because she was prettier than her and was from a more influential family. Most importantly, she also became Gerald's girlfriend. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fleming and Sarah, but I think I need to go now, stated Joelle. She didn't want to waste more time on them. Sure, see you, Mrs. Fleming acknowledged. She felt embarrassed, so she didn't stop them from leaving. She actually was relieved that they were leaving as soon as possible. After that, Joelle and the others walked away. When they were far away, Ariana complained, Well, we've encountered a lot of drama today. Aaron stood in their way first, then Mrs. Fleming and Sarah showed up. Coincidentally, all of them had something to do with Amber and Gerald. Life is full of drama, Amber agreed with a sigh. Love stories were always dramatic because when it came to relationships, some people would be happy while some were doomed to be hurt. After Ariana and the others walked away, Sarah complained. Joelle must have done that on purpose. She didn't tell us that the girl with her was Gerald's girlfriend in order to embarrass us. The truth was, Sarah never liked Joelle and she was very jealous of her. However, she wanted to leave a good impression on the Jordan family, so she always forced herself to be nice to her. 
She thought that Joelle deliberately embarrassed them, but she didn't have evidence. She simply disliked Joelle and blamed her for it. I don't think so. Joelle wouldn't do something like that, Mrs. Fleming disagreed. Because she had met Joelle more times than Sarah had, she knew that the Jordan family's members weren't bad people. In addition, she wasn't biased against Joelle, so she could think normally about this matter. She didn't see any evidence that Joelle did it on purpose. Instead, they said something they shouldn't have said aloud, so they were the ones to blame. Mrs. Fleming was clearly more mature than her daughter. Sarah was unhappy that her mother defended Joelle. She wanted to argue with her, but gave up in the end. Although it was impossible for her to start dating Gerald now, the Fleming family still had to maintain their relationship with the Jordan family. So she couldn't publicly criticize Joelle, no matter how displeased she was. If other people heard them, it would damage their reputation. Well, Gerald is indeed a quality man, but we can't force him to choose you. You've known each other for a long time, so if you could become his girlfriend, you would have been together with him by now. So don't think too much about it anymore. You'll find your Mr. Wright someday. Mrs. Fleming comforted Sarah, hoping that she wouldn't be too sad. Mrs. Fleming had hoped that Sarah could be together with Gerald, but she didn't have much confidence. After all, the Fleming family was hardly comparable to the Jordan family, so she didn't think it was very likely to happen. Therefore, she wasn't surprised by the fact that Gerald already had a girlfriend. It was easier for her to accept it than it was for Sarah. I know, muttered Sarah, but she sounded upset. She understood that her mother was correct, but she just couldn't control her emotions. When it was about 3 o'clock p.m., Ariana and her friends went back to their own homes. Joelle had other plans in the afternoon, while Ariana needed to go to the bungalow. Back at the bungalow, only Ezekiel, Stone, and Cecile were there. Ava and Talia went to work at the flower shop and would come home for dinner. Even though Talia had almost made a full recovery, it was safer for her to stay in the bungalow because she wasn't strong enough to go back to her own apartment she could also cultivate better in the bungalow. After Ariana arrived, she chatted with Ezekiel for a while and then went to see the tree vine in the backyard. Because it only had been a few days, the tree vine hadn't changed a lot, but it indeed changed a little. My owner, when can you bring me to a place with stronger magical power? The tree vine asked upon seeing Ariana. It couldn't wait to go to the place where the magical power was thicker. You need to be patient. I'm busy these days, so I can't bring you there yet, replied Ariana. Fine, the tree vine responded. Although it was slightly disappointed, it had to accept it because it depended on Ariana. Henry knew that Ariana finished her final exams yesterday, so he came back to the bungalow in the afternoon as well. Once he arrived, Ariana told him that she was planning to go to the Flores family's house the day after tomorrow. This time, Henry couldn't go with her because he needed to deal with something else. He could only stay in Los Angeles for two days, and that was only if he didn't have sudden tasks come up. Therefore, he could only go visit Rita after she gave birth to the baby. The Flores family didn't know about Ava yet, so Ariana planned to introduce her to the Flores family this time. However, Ava wouldn't go with Ariana right away. She would also go see Rita after the baby was born. Even though the fact that Ava was Henry's mother was still a secret to most people, Ariana would marry Henry sooner or later, so the Flores family would meet Ava someday. They would become a large family after all, so it was important that they meet her. Ariana told Henry about her final exams, and she also explained what had happened to Talia. Henry was furious when he found out that Talia had been kidnapped and almost died. Although he didn't know Talia very well, since Ava was friends with her, he considered her one of them. He might be unfamiliar with Talia, but he still cared about her. Luckily, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise, and the evil immortal was already dead, so Henry's anger faded away. At 5.30 p.m., Ava and Talia got back to the bungalow. They chatted for a while, then went to have dinner. After dinner, they rested for half an hour, then Henry made an excuse to leave with Ariana. They seldom had private time together, and they would separate again in two days, so they had to make full use of the time they had together. Ezekiel and the others understood that they needed some time alone, so nobody stopped them. 
However, right after Ariana and Henry walked out of the bungalow, they sensed an immortal nearby. Because Ezekiel had cast a spell on the bungalow, even if there were immortals outside, they couldn't sense the immortals inside. Therefore, Ariana and Henry didn't sense an immortal while they were in the bungalow, but they could when they left. Did the nearby immortal come there coincidentally, or did he notice something different? Although average immortals couldn't see anything special about the bungalow, immortals at high levels could see the difference. In order to not expose themselves, Ariana and Henry immediately backed into the bungalow once they sensed the immortal. After that, Ariana used her jade eyes to look for the immortal. She wanted to know whether she knew who it was. As it turned out, it was an old man who looked about 70 years old. He was wearing a beige suit and he was standing by the river, about 20 yards away, staring at the bungalow's walls. This old man was a stranger to Ariana. With a frown, he seemed to carefully think about something. Obviously, he noticed something different about this bungalow. He was at a high level, so he could see that the bungalow had powerful spells cast on it. There was a spell on the bungalow that stopped outsiders from sensing the immortals inside. However, although the old man could see the difference in the bungalow, he also realized that the master who cast the spells was much stronger than him. As a result, he couldn't remove the spells. Of course, he had no intention of doing that because it was unnecessary. There was no reason for him to damage other people's work. Besides, there must be a master living inside. If he tried to damage it, he might not succeed. Out of curiosity, the old man stopped there and observed the house carefully. He wanted to know who lived in it. He hadn't heard of any immortals who were that talented at spells in the world of immortals, but perhaps he didn't know all the masters, since he was on retreat for a long time. Actually, he just sensed the air of another immortal, but it quickly disappeared. He bet the immortal must have shown up for a very short while, then went inside again. The old man didn't think the immortal discovered him because the immortal was at a lower level than him. It was true that Henry didn't sense him, but Ariana did. Although Ariana was at a lower level, she had the blood of the phoenix in her body, so she was able to sense an immortal at any level, as long as they weren't too far away. After the old man sensed the air of another immortal who quickly disappeared, he felt as if someone was looking at him. It came from the direction of the bungalow. However, when he looked in that direction, he saw nothing but the wall that went around the bungalow. It aroused his curiosity. What was going on here? It was impossible for him to know that someone had a pair of jade eyes and could see him through the wall. Ariana's gaze fell on the old man for only a few seconds. As soon as she saw that the old man noticed what she was doing, she withdrew her sight. As a result, the old man thought it was just an illusion. Ariana figured that even if the old man noticed the difference of the bungalow, it wouldn't be a big deal, because the whole world of immortals was aware of Ezekiel's existence. Once the old man learned that this house was Ezekiel's residence, he would lose interest in it. At any rate, Ariana wouldn't allow him to discover her and Henry's real identity. Without delay, the two of them went back inside. They told Ezekiel and the others that there was an immortal outside. Ezekiel wasn't surprised that someone would notice the difference in the bungalow. He never expected to keep it a complete secret. He didn't think the spell he cast on the bungalow was perfect, so he knew it would be noticed by another immortal sooner or later. Because they didn't know whether the old man was a friend or an enemy, Henry and Ariana disguised themselves as Sam and Isla so that their true identities wouldn't be exposed. Cecile left after making dinner for everyone, so Stone was the only mortal left in the house. Given the current situation, Henry needed him to leave, so he told Stone to take a few days off. Ava and Talia went directly back to their rooms. If the old man came in, they wouldn't appear. The old man had no malice for the people in the bungalow, but he was very curious to know who was living there. Therefore, he decided to pay them a visit. Although it was an abrupt visit, he didn't want to leave without figuring out who was living there. If there were familiar faces that lived there, it wouldn't be impolite. Accordingly, the old man walked to the front gate of the bungalow and rang the bell. Ariana came to open the door. This time, she showed her level as the immortal Isla. Once the door opened, the old man said politely, Hello, young lady. I'm sorry to bother you, but I just passed by and could see that there are spells cast on this bungalow. 
I thought that there must be people of my kind living in it, so I rang the bell on the door. Would you please introduce me to the master who cast the spells? The old man didn't bother to hide his intention because he wanted to show his sincerity. Moreover, he needed a good reason to get in the house. He wasn't stupid. He knew that if he lied, he would easily be seen through. Since we are of the same kind, you are our guest. Please come in. Ariana welcomed him. She had a different appearance now, so she didn't mind meeting the old man. In addition, she could see that this old man was very kind, so there was no reason for her to be rude to him. Thank you very much, the old man thanked her, then followed her inside. As soon as he entered the bungalow, he was shocked, because it was filled with magical power. At this moment, he was even more impressed with the level of the master who cast the spells on this house. Miss, may I ask your name? asked the old man. He was still very polite. He didn't think lightly of Ariana just because she was much younger than him. My name is Isla, replied Ariana. The old man was surprised and asked, Are you Ezekiel's disciple, Isla? He had heard about the martial arts competition held in the world of immortals recently, and he had been astonished by the fact that Ezekiel was still alive. If Ezekiel was the master who lived in this house, it wouldn't be surprising that this place was protected so well. Yes, confirmed Ariana. She wasn't surprised that this old man was aware of Ezekiel's relationship with her. The old man got excited when he heard Ariana's answer. Oh, I didn't know it was Ezekiel who lives here. If he is here, I think I must see him, he requested. Sir, do you know my master? What should I call you? asked Ariana. I'm the senior elder of the Ansara, Ezra Levin, Ezra introduced himself. Oh, hello, Elder Levin. I'm very honored to meet you. When I visited the World of Immortals last time, I heard you were on a retreat, Ariana responded. She was slightly surprised when she heard that the old man was the senior elder of the Ansara. She could see that the old man was at a very high level, but she wasn't sure how high his level was. Therefore, she had assumed that this old man couldn't be an ordinary immortal, but she didn't expect him to be an elder of the Ansara. That's correct. I was on a retreat and didn't come back until a few days ago, replied Ezra. As they talked, Ariana brought Ezra to the living room, where Ezekiel and Henry were waiting. Master, the guest is here, announced Ariana. Ezra hadn't seen Ezekiel in real life before, but he had seen Ezekiel's photos, so he was sure that the person in front of him was really him. Honored to see you, Ezekiel. I'm the senior elder of the Ansara, Ezra Levin, said Ezra, bowing to Ezekiel. Because immortals respected the strong, Ezra had to be very respectful of Ezekiel. Ezekiel didn't put on any airs, especially in front of people who were kind to him. Therefore, he also stood up and politely replied, Hello, it's very nice to see you, Elder Levin. Please have a seat. After that, Ezra sat down with Ezekiel, and Ariana went to pour a cup of tea for him. I'm sorry for the abrupt visit. Please forgive my rudeness, Ezekiel, pleaded Ezra. Because he paid a sudden visit, he thought that he should apologize to show his manners. It's not abrupt at all. We were supposed to meet each other in the world of immortals recently, Ezekiel pointed out. He didn't mind it at all. I was on a retreat back then, so I was absent from the martial arts competition. I didn't know you had visited the world of immortals until I came back. It's a great pity that we didn't see each other. Luckily, I coincidentally found your residence, remarked Ezra. He was telling the truth. Ezekiel enjoyed a high status, and he was at a very high level too, so Ezra was interested in seeing him. Ezekiel, I have to say that your two disciples are very impressive. They won the first and second prizes with so many magical crystals, Ezra complimented sincerely. Henry and Ariana gained a lot of fame after the competition in the world of immortals, and they became the idols of many immortals. Many people were also jealous of them. Well, they're indeed talented and powerful, otherwise I wouldn't have picked them, Ezekiel chuckled. Haha, you're right. Plus, your two disciples are still very young. I bet they'll be very successful in the future, Ezra pointed out. He was certain that Henry and Ariana had potential. They were talented, plus they had Ezekiel, who was at a very high level as their master. Ezra enjoyed chatting with Ezekiel. However, he felt embarrassed to stay for too long, so he excused himself and got up to leave after half an hour. Before he walked away, he gave a glance at Henry, then said, 
I have a disciple who's about the same age as you, Sam. He's at a lower level, but he's also in the Golden Core stage. If it's possible, I'd like it if you two could have a competition, just for fun. No problem, agreed Henry. It wasn't a bad idea. They knew that Ezra's disciple was Logan, but Ezra was unaware that they already knew each other, both in real life and as their aliases. In the bungalow, Ezra also sensed the weak presence of another immortal, but he could tell it was a newcomer who just started cultivating. It was Talia. In addition, Ezra sensed the presence of a monster, which was the tree vine. However, that was just a feeling, and he didn't bother to look around to investigate. It wouldn't be surprising, no matter what Ezekiel kept by his side. However, Ezra couldn't sense Ava's presence, because she was at a higher level than him. Moreover, there was strong magical power in the bungalow, so it was hard to be sure whether there was someone of a different kind. After Ezra left, Ava and Talia walked out. They wanted to know who the guest was. It was the senior elder of the Ansara, Ezra Levin, explained Ezekiel. Oh, Elder Levin? Ava nodded in familiarity. He doesn't seem to be a bad man, remarked Ezekiel. Elder Levin was the most virtuous and respected man on the board of elders. I'm sure it's still the case now, Ava exclaimed. In other words, Ezra was the best among the board of elders. At least, that was her impression of Ezra over 20 years ago, because she had been away from the world of immortals for more than 20 years. Some things might have changed. Therefore, she wasn't too sure of it now. In the board of elders, Alden Pendleton was also respected by a lot of people. The other two elders, however, didn't have a good reputation. They were selfish and ambitious, so they didn't get along well with Alden and Ezra. They always schemed against them. However, they hadn't done anything unacceptable yet, so they couldn't be regarded as bad people. Because Eva had left the world of immortals more than 20 years ago, she didn't know that Logan was Ezra's disciple. When she left, Logan was still young and hadn't been accepted as a disciple by anyone yet. After staying for a while longer, Ariana and Henry left. At this time, Ezra went to Aspenhaven to see Logan. Evelyn had already gone back to the world of immortals earlier that day, so Logan was left alone in his house. Ezra visited him along with several servants. After he arrived at Logan's residence, he informed him, I walked by the botanical gardens today and noticed a bungalow with spells cast on it. Because it was clearly a master who cast the spells on the house, spells that were so powerful that even I couldn't remove them, I got curious and paid a visit. You met a spell master? gasped Logan, sounding greatly surprised. Why did so many masters appear in the mortal world all of a sudden? He had met Ezekiel and Ezekiel's disciples first, then the mysterious master who injured Ambrose, and now there was another master who was excellent at spells. It wasn't a secret that Ambrose was injured, so members of the other major families in the world of immortals were all aware of it. They didn't bother to laugh at Ambrose. Instead, they were amazed that there was such a master in the outside world, and it was a woman. Who's the spell master? Logan asked curiously. It's Ezekiel, answered Ezra. Logan wasn't shocked by that name, but he still said in surprise, It's Ezekiel? Wow, I can't believe he's also so good at spells. His male disciple is at a slightly higher level than you. If it's possible, I think you should have a competition with him for fun. You'll benefit a lot from it, suggested Ezra. Although Logan wasn't as good as Henry and was very likely to lose if they had a competition, Ezra didn't want him to win, but to learn. Of course, master, agreed Logan. Ever since he had learned that Henry was Ezekiel's disciple, he had been wanting to have a competition with him. However, he felt it might be a little pushy to bring it up, so he never talked about it with Ariana. He didn't know Henry very well, so he could only get in touch with him through Ariana. Even though he wasn't as close to Ariana as Evelyn was, they were still friends. Logan didn't tell Ezra about Henry and Ariana's real identities. He had promised them to keep it a secret. Besides, it wouldn't hurt anyone. After Ariana and Henry went back to Greystone Gardens, they chatted for a while on the sofa with the TV on, then started kissing. Unfortunately, just as Henry was about to carry Ariana to the bedroom, his phone rang. Henry was instantly mad, but he had to answer it. Every time Ariana saw Henry get upset after being interrupted during their private time, she found it hilarious and laughed out loud. Stop laughing at me, Henry teased her. 
pretending to squint at her as if he was upset. The next second, he kissed her lips. Ariana gave him a teasing glare back. However, the only thing her glare did was arouse Henry even more. He almost lost control of himself at this moment, wanting to throw himself at her. However, he had to answer the phone right now and hoped it wasn't serious. After taking a deep breath, Henry calmed himself down and then picked the phone up. The moment he saw the caller's name, he was disappointed because it was Gerald. Gerald came back to Los Angeles along with him and he had suggested that they could hang out together if they were free tonight, so it must be for that reason that he interrupted him at this time. Henry wanted to ignore the call because he didn't want to go out, but he was worried that it might be something serious. What? Henry coldly asked once he answered the call. Gerald could hear the anger in Henry's tone, so he was taken aback for a second. He assumed that Henry had encountered something unpleasant. He didn't think that he was mad at him for his interruption. Hey, what are you doing now? Why don't we... Gerald said. Knowing that Gerald just wanted to meet up with him, Henry interrupted before he could finish. No, I'm busy now. If there's nothing important going on, don't call me, he ordered. The second he finished, he hung up on Gerald. Gerald was stunned by Henry's scolding. After hanging up, he didn't come back to his senses until a couple of moments later. He thought that Henry might be in trouble. Therefore, he was slightly worried and wondered if he should call him again. However, Henry hung up on him so fast, which meant it wasn't convenient for him to answer a phone call now. It might not be a good idea for him to try it once more. Gerald's brother Joshua saw the worry on his face and asked, What, won't Henry come? He said he's busy, he can't come. He shouted that I shouldn't call him again unless something very important came up. I'm just a little worried, remarked Gerald. He had many guesses, but never thought that he had interrupted Henry in the middle of his private time with Ariana. Joshua frowned and suggested, Perhaps he's dealing with something important. Don't worry, Henry isn't weak, he can handle it. Because it wasn't even 10 o'clock p.m. yet, Joshua had no idea about what Henry was really doing at this time. Nevertheless, he was correct. Henry was very strong and he would be fine. Thinking of that, Gerald felt relieved. Meanwhile, Ariana snorted with laughter at the way Henry handled the phone call with Gerald. Really? Do you think it's a good idea to say no to him like that? She asked. Of course, you are much more enjoyable than drinks with a bunch of dudes, replied Henry with an evil smile, then threw himself at her. Ariana turned around and pressed Henry against the sofa. Her body was so close to his. Looking at him, she said amorously, Well, I think you made the right choice. Facing Ariana's boldness, Henry got excited. He couldn't wait to see what she would do next. He smiled happily and teased her. Oh yeah? Why don't you make sure I don't regret my choice? Without delay, Ariana began to kiss his lips, then his face, his nose, his jaw, his Adam's apple, and his chest. Her hand moved slowly downwards, making Henry tremble a little with pleasure. He was completely aroused. The atmosphere in the room turned exciting, and they didn't stop until they were both exhausted. Ariana, I need to ask you about something, said Henry seriously all of a sudden. Staring at his serious face, Ariana became serious too. What is it? She asked. Have I gotten better in bed? Henry asked with an eager expression. Ariana tried to hold back her laughter. Henry looked so nervous at this moment, wondering what she was going to say. She didn't want to hurt his feelings by laughing, however, so she kissed his cheek and whispered, Of course you have. Do you want more? Henry asked. Yeah, I want more, Ariana beamed. Upon hearing that, Henry got excited again, but he didn't move right away and continued to ask, What do you want? I want, Ariana's voice trailed off. What? Henry swallowed and asked again. His eyes were full of burning desire. Ariana took a deep breath and moaned, I want you. In an instant, Henry lost control of himself. The couple made love passionately once more. However, because both of them had used a lot of strength, this time it didn't last long. But they still didn't stop until they were completely exhausted. Early the next morning, Gerald called Henry and invited him and Ariana to go hiking with him and Amber. 
Although they had been very busy at work lately, they needed to relax when they had free time. However, the purpose of hiking the mountain this time was not purely for fun. Gerald heard a rumor from Joshua that there was a strange cave on Eagle Mountain. It was very windy inside, and people couldn't go more than about 30 yards in before being blown down. When Gerald heard that, he couldn't believe it. There was wind coming from inside a cave. It was so strong that it could blow people down. Obviously, that wasn't normal. Nobody knew the reason for it. Many people have tried to figure it out but failed. In time, it was blocked with steel bars to prevent people from entering. It would be bad if something went wrong and someone got hurt there. In the past, Gerald would just think that these things were just hearsay, and he would only regard it as a rumor and wouldn't take it seriously. However, ever since he learned that there were monsters, ghosts, and people with superpowers in this world, he didn't think that the strong wind was too shocking. He was only curious about whether it was true. If it could really blow people down, it must be unusual. He wanted to find out more about it. If it wasn't for the strange cave, he and his friends wouldn't go to a mountain peak in such cold weather. He was a strong man, so he could stand the low temperature, but he was worried about Amber. He actually didn't want to take Amber with him at first, but Amber insisted that she had to join them, so he agreed. Gerald's description of the cave aroused Henry's curiosity. He was mainly afraid that there might be monsters or ghosts there, which could hurt innocent people if they didn't get rid of them as soon as possible. If there were really monsters or ghosts, a few steel bars wouldn't stop them. Breaking through those would be child's play. Henry told Ariana about it, and Ariana agreed that they should go to see the cave. Since Gerald believed it might have something to do with monsters or ghosts, he knew it could be a dangerous trip. The only other person he invited was Carl. Carl came back with him and Henry yesterday, so when they hung out at the bar together last night, Joshua shared the rumor with them. In fact, Joshua had invited them to visit the cave with him, but Gerald turned him down with the excuse that they needed to deal with something else. They could go there the next time they were free. Gerald simply did that to stop Joshua from going there. After all, Joshua was too weak to handle it. He might be injured if he went there. Amber and Carl, on the other hand, were both strong. Plus, with Henry and Ariana's help, they would be safe. Soon they were ready to go. They didn't meet in the city, but decided to directly meet at the foot of Eagle Mountain. Eagle Mountain was located south of Los Angeles, in a national parks area about 40 miles away from the city center. It was the highest mountain in the surrounding area, with an altitude of nearly 5,000 feet. Eagle Mountain was mainly composed of volcanic rocks. The mountains in the territory were towering and the valleys were deeply cut. It was a relatively dangerous scenic spot. Besides, it wasn't close to the city, so there weren't many visitors, especially in winter. That was a good thing for Ariana and her friends because it would be convenient for them to take action if anything unusual really happened. After Gerald, Amber, and Carl arrived and waited for about 10 minutes, Ariana and Henry came. They had already eaten breakfast, but it would take a long time to climb the mountain today, so they brought some snacks and water with them. Once they were all present, they didn't waste any time and went to buy passes to enter the area. Since the trails and caves in the area were maintained by the National Park Service, there was a small admission fee to enter. Although they came specifically to see the mysterious cave, they didn't rush. Like everyone else, they climbed the mountain at their usual speed, but given their physical strength, it was very easy for them to hike quickly. As a result, they were much faster than average people. The cave was located in an area that was two-thirds the height of the mountain, and the altitude of the mountain was very high, so it took a long time to get there. Although they were very fast, they still had to spend slightly more than an hour on the trail. Along the way, they only passed about 20 visitors who came to climb the mountain as well. There were also several forks in the trail on the mountain, which led to different viewpoints, so there might be more visitors in other places and they just didn't see them. However, in addition to them, there was another group of four who also came to visit the cave. They arrived there slightly before Ariana and the others. The group consisted of two men and two women. All of them were very young. They looked like they were college students who were about 20 years old. That group hesitated to go in at the entrance of the main cave 
because they had also heard the rumor about the strong wind. Although they weren't sure whether it was true or false, they still felt scared and wondered if there was a ghost inside. They weren't sure they believed in ghosts, but felt frightened at the thought. When they saw Ariana and her friends come, they felt slightly relieved. If there was a larger group of people, they wouldn't be so scared. As Ariana and her friends walked closer, the group of college students were stunned by how attractive they all were. The men were handsome, and the women were extraordinarily beautiful. However, when the two college girls saw Ariana and Amber, they got jealous of them. They were pretty too, but were barely comparable to Ariana and Amber. The girl with short hair was only a little jealous of them and had no hatred for them. The girl with long hair, however, was full of jealousy and showed obvious hostility towards them. Ariana and Amber didn't care about that because they didn't bother to compare themselves to the two college girls at all. The next second, the long-haired girl who was jealous of Ariana and Amber walked towards them. She had what she believed to be the most attractive smile on her face. She originally walked towards Henry, but she paused for a while after a few steps, then turned to Gerald. Hi there, are you going into the cave? She asked in a gentle voice. The answer couldn't be more obvious, and the girl simply wanted to strike up a conversation with them. She actually wanted to strike up a conversation with Henry first, but he looked too intimidating, so she didn't dare to go closer. Gerald, however, looked much nicer, so she turned to him. Ariana and Amber exchanged a glance. Amber wasn't mad. She was honestly a bit annoyed, but she didn't bother to argue with the girl. This short-haired girl witnessed everything the long-haired girl did and rolled her eyes at her behavior. The long-haired girl's purpose was too obvious. She just couldn't get rid of the bad habit of striking up a conversation with handsome men whenever she saw them. However, the short-haired girl had no intention of stopping her companion. They weren't actually very good friends, and they didn't get along. She would love to see the long-haired girl embarrass herself. The two college boys, however, didn't know much about the girl's thoughts, so they thought the long-haired girl really wanted to find out whether Gerald and his friends were planning to go into the cave as well. If they were going inside too, they would be more than willing to go with them. Therefore, they didn't stop the long-haired girl either. Yeah, replied Gerald in a flat voice. He could see the long-haired girl's purpose, so he had a bad impression of her. However, if he didn't give an answer, he would seem impolite, so he replied to her question. We want to go inside too, but we don't have many people. We're a little scared. Can we go in together? Asked the long-haired girl. She even acted pitifully, trying to win Gerald's sympathy. You can stay outside if you're scared. We don't need more companions. We're not afraid, responded Gerald coldly. Then he left the long-haired girl. He went to hold Amber's hand and started to push past the other group. Gerald didn't do that just because he was afraid that Amber might be mad. Even if Amber was absent, he would still do that because he hated pretentious and calculating girls. Moreover, if those college students followed them inside, they would only be a burden. Gerald didn't want to be burdened. However, he couldn't chase them away, so he thought they could leave those college students behind by walking faster. If the college students were scared, they would turn back. In addition, in the main cave, there were several different paths to take that led to smaller caves. After they separated, those college students might not dare to take the trail that led to the Windy Cave. Other than that Windy Cave, the other trails in the cave were safe. The long-haired girl didn't expect Gerald to embarrass her publicly, and she instantly became mad. What was worse, Gerald held another girl's hand and directly walked past her. Although she had wondered whether they were a couple, she wasn't very sure of it. Not every man and a woman who stood next to each other were a couple after all. Within the group of college students, the short-haired girl was dating one of the boys. The long-haired girl wasn't dating the other boy, although he was interested in her. The short-haired girl gloated over the long-haired girl's bad luck. She had tried to strike up a conversation with a man right in front of his girlfriend. It wasn't surprising at all that she was rejected. The two college boys didn't blame the long-haired girl, but they felt Gerald's attitude was a little harsh. The short-haired girl's boyfriend said nothing. Although he was displeased with Gerald's attitude, he didn't think Gerald had to agree to go with them. The other boy, however, couldn't stand it. 
Because he liked the long-haired girl, he was protective of her, so he immediately stepped forward and stopped Gerald and Amber before they could walk into the cave. I think your behavior is out of line, he accused angrily. The long-haired girl was very satisfied when the boy stood up for her. She enjoyed it when men protected her because it made her feel special. Actually, she wasn't interested in that boy romantically, but she didn't reject him because he was good-looking and was from a rich family. He also treated her very well, so she gave him hope, but never accepted him. My behavior is out of line, Gerald repeated, frowning a little. He didn't understand why the boy criticized him like that. Why, do I have to agree to go with you? He asked. Gerald didn't want to argue with the boy, but he couldn't tolerate selfish people. The boy suddenly didn't know what to say. It was true that they couldn't force Gerald to go in with them. The short-haired girl's boyfriend immediately came over to pull the boy back. It's all right, we can go in by ourselves, he offered. He knew they were in no position to criticize Gerald. The boy also realized that he was being unreasonable, so we said nothing further, while Gerald left with Amber. The long-haired girl was disappointed when she saw that, but she knew that she couldn't criticize Gerald for disagreeing with them. After that, Henry also walked into the cave, holding Ariana's hand. The long-haired girl felt another pang of jealousy. Why were handsome men always taken? Carl was handsome too, but he wasn't comparable to Henry and Gerald. He was also much older than them, so the long-haired girl didn't pay special attention to him. After Henry and the others entered the cave, the four college students caught up with them. Even though they refused to go with them, they could follow them. There was nothing wrong with that. Ariana and the others indeed said nothing about it, but they could speed up to get rid of them. Without delay, Ariana and her friends walked faster. When the four college students saw them walking forward so quickly, they clearly knew that they were trying to get rid of them. They were very displeased, but had to swallow their anger because they couldn't blame them for that. At first, they could still follow them, but gradually they were left behind. There were many bends in the caves, so the four college students soon lost Ariana and the others when they were a distance away. Even though they knew that there were people ahead, they were still scared. After walking for a few more minutes, they reached a fork in the path. At this moment, they had no idea which way Ariana and her friends went. They had hoped that they could catch up with the others by following closely behind, but unfortunately, they soon lost them after only a few minutes in the cave. Damn it, they are so rude. They got rid of us on purpose, whined the long-haired girl angrily. Why are you always blaming other people? It's not their duty to wait for us, pointed out the short-haired girl. She couldn't stand the other girl's temper. The long-haired girl huffed in frustration, but didn't know how to retort. The boy who liked her didn't agree with her attitude this time, so he didn't defend her. Well, I'm not going forward anymore. I'm going back, announced the long-haired girl. This cave wasn't only scary, it was also wet and cold. It was very uncomfortable. Okay, why don't we all go back now? The boy who liked her immediately agreed. He cared about her, and besides, he was slightly frightened too. Although there were lights in the cave and the way was well lit, the long and empty passageways filled them with trepidation. The short-haired girl and her boyfriend were also unwilling to go farther, so they agreed to go back. After feeling that the four college students stopped following them, Ariana and the others slowed down. Although they came to this place because of the strange wind, they wanted to enjoy the sights of the cave. The passage inside this cave wasn't that big. Sections of it were two or three yards high, while some were seven or eight yards high, but it was an enclosed area. This cave was naturally formed. Even though it had been made accessible for tourists, at most it was paved with a cement path and lights placed on both sides. At the forks in the path, there were trail signs, so it wasn't difficult to find the trail that led to the windy area, which was aptly named Windy Cave. Is there really a strong wind? Amber asked. She had heard the rumor, but she wasn't sure she believed it, because she didn't know that there were ghosts and monsters in this world. However, after hearing about this windy cave, she felt it might be true. We'll see when we feel the wind, shrugged Gerald. Because there was still a long way to the windy area, and there was no strong wind at the entrance of the cave, they weren't sure if they would really feel the strange wind when they went further. 
However, Ariana and Henry had very keen senses, so they noticed the sound of the wind blowing ahead of them, but it wasn't very loud. Before they witnessed it firsthand, they couldn't determine that it was abnormal, even though it was windy. It was possible that it was an artificial wind in order to attract visitors. They continued to walk ahead. After walking for five minutes, they felt an icy wind blowing at their faces. It made the low temperature go down a few more degrees. However, Ariana and Henry couldn't sense any trace of monsters or ghosts from it. They couldn't be sure that it had nothing to do with supernatural forces, however, because they were still a distance away from the destination. At this point, they were certain that it wasn't an artificial wind. There is really wind, Amber exclaimed, sounding surprised. Are you scared? Gerald asked. Because Amber hadn't witnessed monsters and ghosts with her own eyes yet, he was worried that she might be afraid if there really was something supernatural nearby. I'm not. There is nothing to be afraid of. Are you afraid? Amber argued. She had been through a lot after all and didn't think the wind was scary. Amber, do you believe in monsters or ghosts? Ariana asked. She felt it was necessary to help Amber be mentally prepared. No, answered Amber at once. However, when she thought about the question Ariana asked, she suddenly wondered whether monsters and ghosts were real. Thinking of that, she stiffened a little in panic. Why, do they really exist? She asked worriedly. Ariana smiled and replied, Anything can exist in this world, so I prefer to believe in them. Before they ran into monsters or ghosts, Ariana couldn't be too honest with Amber. At this moment, Amber started feeling nervous. Did monsters and ghosts really exist? If so, it would be frightening. Don't worry, if they are real, I'll protect you, Gerald comforted her, squeezing her hand a little. I'm not afraid at all, Amber stated. Ariana only told her that there could be anything in this world. That didn't mean that monsters and ghosts were real. Even if they were real, she wouldn't be afraid since the others didn't look scared. After that, they walked deeper and the wind became stronger. However, it seemed to be natural and they still couldn't feel the trace of any monsters or ghosts. Do you feel cold? Gerald asked Amber with concern after she started shivering a little. Not really, she denied. It was a little chilly, but she was getting more worried as the wind grew stronger. Could it really have something to do with monsters or ghosts? However, even though she was anxious, she didn't show it on her face. After walking for a few more minutes, they finally reached the entrance of the cave that was blocked off by steel bars. When they got there, they felt a strong wind. They could barely open their eyes and were shivering with cold. If it became stronger, it would feel like a tornado and they would hardly be able to walk then. Therefore, the developed pathway ended here because it was difficult for people to continue farther ahead. Could there really be monsters or ghosts? This wind is so weird, Amber exclaimed. At this time, she finally looked scared and cold, but she could still bear it. She was physically strong and had put on many layers of clothes because she knew it would be very cold in the cave. Even Gerald and Carl felt cold too. Only Ariana and Henry stayed warm because they were protected by their magical power. I don't think so, said Ariana, hoping to comfort Amber. In fact, she and Henry indeed didn't feel the breath of any monsters or ghosts from the wind. However, it couldn't be natural wind because they were far from the outside world now. There were no lights ahead and it was completely dark, so Ariana's jade eyes didn't work as well. Henry and I will go in to have a closer look. You can guard out here. Don't stand facing the wind and you won't be very cold. No matter how long we stay in there, don't come in. If we don't come out within an hour, you can leave first and go back to the foot of the mountain to wait for us, Ariana said to Gerald and the others. She said that because she was afraid that they might encounter an accident and be unable to come back soon. If they were really in danger, Gerald and the others wouldn't be able to rescue them, so they shouldn't come in no matter what happens. They had to leave. Ariana didn't think that she and Henry would be injured. After all, even if they ran into trouble, they would get themselves out. She just said that to be safe. What? You two are going in there? It's too dangerous, Amber protested. She didn't think it was a good idea. Gerald and Carl understood what Ariana and Henry planned to do, so they agreed. Even if they disagreed, it was useless. Therefore, they replied, 
It's okay, we'll wait out here. Amber couldn't believe her ears. How could Gerald and Carl agree to let Ariana and Henry go in without them? She was anxious and annoyed. She felt that they didn't care about Ariana and Henry at all. Gerald comforted her by saying, It's all right, Henry and Ariana will be fine. It might not be so dangerous inside. Perhaps they'll come back in just a few minutes. He actually wasn't sure whether it was dangerous, but he didn't want Amber to worry. In case she wasn't convinced, he added, Henry also agreed with Ariana. That's an order for us. We can't stop them. If we dare to stand in their way, we'll be punished according to the rules in the military. Do you want to see me and Carl punished? What? Really? Amber asked, surprised. She thought they were just having fun at the mountain, not carrying out a task. How come it was an order? Seeing Amber's confused face, Henry added, Yeah, we'll do what Ariana just said. This is an order. At this moment, Amber couldn't say anything about it. She wasn't dumb, and she knew that soldiers could never say no to orders from their leader. Besides, she didn't want to see Gerald punished. In addition, since Gerald and Carl trusted Ariana and Henry, she had to trust them too. Gerald and Carl had been Henry's comrades for years, so they should be very aware of his abilities. Henry agreed to go in with Ariana, and both of them were strong people. Moreover, just as Gerald said, they might come back soon. However, Amber was still worried about their safety, so she begged Ariana, You must be careful. Come out as soon as possible. Don't worry, we'll be fine, Ariana assured her. After that, Ariana and Henry were ready to go in. The entrance to the cave was blocked by steel bars, so if they wanted to get in, they had to cut them. Ariana took out a dagger and handed it to Henry. Because Gerald and the others were present, Henry couldn't use his sword, or it would expose more of his secrets. It made more sense for him to have a dagger. However, a dagger wasn't able to cut the steel bars on its own, so Henry used his magical energy. Combined with magical energy, the dagger could easily ruin a building. It would be easy to cut a few steel bars. Are you going to use that dagger to cut those steel bars? Amber asked doubtfully. She didn't think it was possible. Gerald and Carl were aware that Henry was weirdly powerful, so they knew it wouldn't be a problem, but they didn't know that he was an immortal. The moment Amber finished speaking, Henry quickly sliced through three steel bars with the dagger, which shocked her. It seemed very easy for him. Before Amber could figure out how he did it, Henry cut off the lower parts of the three steel bars. As a result, the middle parts of the steel bars fell, creating an empty space big enough for a person to go in. Henry went in first, followed by Ariana. Afterwards, they walked inside and soon disappeared into the darkness. Amber didn't come back to her senses until Ariana and Henry were totally gone. She glanced at the broken steel bars and still couldn't understand how Henry did it. Wow, that was unbelievable, she exclaimed. No need to worry, Henry is much stronger than you think, said Gerald to comfort her. He didn't think it was wrong that Amber was worried about Ariana and Henry because he cared about them too. Even though they knew that both Ariana and Henry were very strong and they believed that they would be fine, they were still a little anxious. After witnessing Henry's ability, however, Amber was less worried. I'm sure you're right, she responded. Once Henry and Ariana got into the windy cave, they used the night luminescent pearl to light their way. Even though it wasn't very bright, it was enough for them to see the path. The farther they went, the stronger the wind became. Ordinary people could barely move a step at this point, but Ariana and Henry only had some difficulties. They could still move with relative ease. When the wind became so strong that it could blow people down, they found it hard to move ahead, but they were still able to walk forward. As Ariana walked forward, she used her jade eyes on the trail in front of her. Perhaps because of the magnetic field, she could only see a short distance of about 30 feet. It was still completely dark ahead. It's really strange. Where is this wind coming from? I thought there might be monsters or ghosts, but I can't sense them at all, remarked Ariana, frowning with confusion. I don't know. I guess we can only keep going to see what's ahead of us, suggested Henry. He felt that it was strange too, but they needed more clues. As they walked ahead, the wind became stronger and stronger, and it became more and more difficult for them to move. However, because they still couldn't see anything dangerous, 
they had to continue to go forward. Right when they felt it was difficult for them to go ahead, they saw a sparkling white barrier, but they didn't know what was behind it. Even Ariana's jade eyes were useless now. She could only see white everywhere ahead. I can't see what's behind the barrier, sighed Ariana with a big frown. She couldn't see through it, so she wasn't sure whether it was dangerous and whether they should continue to explore past it. Let's go closer and throw something through it, suggested Henry. After that, they moved closer to the barrier. Ariana took out a small bar of silver from her telepathic eye space and threw it into the barrier. The bar of silver hit the barrier and bounced off. It couldn't cross it. Ariana suddenly had a bold theory, and she blurted out, could it be a time-traveling tunnel or something? It was unlikely, but she really thought it was a bit possible. After all, given her experience, she felt that nothing was impossible. Henry agreed it was possible, but didn't think it was very likely. There could be anything behind the barrier. Why don't we just go back now, Henry proposed. This was the first time that he wanted to give up. He was worried that they might not be able to stay safe if they touched the barrier, and he was unwilling to take the risk. Ariana hesitated for a second, then agreed. Sure, let's go back. The truth was, she was also worried about the unknown danger behind the barrier. Her jade eyes were useless in such a situation. If it was really a time-traveling tunnel behind the barrier, they might be separated from the present time after going in. In that case, they couldn't come back. What would they do then? Therefore, it was better if they didn't touch it. Luckily, ordinary people couldn't get here, so not many people would be in danger of encountering it accidentally. If anyone dared to risk his or her life to come here, Ariana and Henry could do nothing about it. They didn't want bad things to happen, but they couldn't save everyone. After that, they turned around and were about to leave. Unexpectedly, an accident happened right at this moment. All of a sudden, they felt that a powerful force was sucking them back which made their faces turn pale in shock. However, before they had time to struggle and escape, they were completely absorbed by this force and then lost consciousness. When Ariana woke up again, she found herself lying on a bed in a bedroom. The first thing she realized was that she and Henry had left the cave. However, she didn't know how because she must have passed out. Anyway, since they were out now, Henry must be with her. Where was he? Upon thinking of Henry, Ariana lifted up her head and looked for him. She glanced around and strangely found that this bedroom was very familiar. Abruptly, she jumped out of the bed in horror. Wasn't this the studio apartment she had lived in before her reincarnation? Why was she here? Did she… Ariana was scared and couldn't believe her eyes. She immediately left the bed and ran to the bathroom to look at herself in the mirror. After she saw her face in the mirror, she backed up in fright. She was no longer Ariana. She saw Amelia's face in the mirror. How was it possible? How did it happen? She came back to the time before her reincarnation. It was hard for Ariana to accept it. It must be a dream. She pinched herself a few times, and it hurt. Since it was painful, that meant that she wasn't in a dream. Was that barrier really a time-traveling tunnel? Did she really travel in time, back to the days before her reincarnation? Ariana couldn't accept that it was true. She went back to the side of the bed and picked up her phone to check the date. It showed a date before her reincarnation. It was a month before she was murdered by Zed and Naomi. She had some time off of work during those days, so she enjoyed herself in her own apartment. In her memories, Zed would call her to have dinner together that evening. Ariana immediately read the messages on her phone. She was right. There were messages between her and Zed. It was 3 o'clock p.m. now, and she still had three hours until she met him for dinner. Although Zed was only taking advantage of her, he seemed to be a very good boyfriend on the surface, and that's why she had been fooled. However, Ariana was still unable to process what had happened to her just now. Where was Henry? Where did he go? Did he travel back in time as well? Ariana had his number memorized, so she called it without delay, but his phone was turned off. After that, she called the number she used after her reincarnation, the one she used as Ariana. The call was answered, and she heard a familiar voice say, 
Hi, who is this? This is Ariana's mother. She isn't home and left her phone behind. It was Rita. Because Ariana already took Rita as her own mother and had a deep affection for her, she almost cried when she heard Rita's voice. However, she was still in a mess now and could easily lose control of her emotions. Ariana had to calm herself down. She said she had dialed the wrong number and quickly hung up. After hanging up, Ariana was completely stunned. Did she just go back to the very beginning of her story? No, there must be a way back. She decided that she needed to find the cave and the barrier. Then she would be able to go back to her real timeline. Thinking of that, she went to change her clothes. All of a sudden, she remembered that ordinary people couldn't get into the cave. So she immediately checked whether her telepathic eye space and abilities still existed. Luckily, she still had them and she felt relieved. If she lost her abilities, she wouldn't be able to go into the cave. She quickly left her apartment and drove straight to Eagle Mountain. After she arrived, she climbed up the mountain as fast as possible. Because it was a cool autumn day, which was very suitable for hiking, there were many visitors to the mountain. The other visitors were astonished when they witnessed Ariana climbing up so fast. She didn't seem to be leisurely hiking the mountain at all. She seemed like she was running for her life. It was true, because Ariana indeed was running to leave this world and get back to her body after her reincarnation. However, when she reached the cave, a realization dawned on her. She and Henry were absorbed into the barrier and disappeared together. If she went back right now, Henry would be left alone in the world after her reincarnation. Therefore, Ariana stopped. She decided to find Henry first. She had been so shocked earlier that she wasn't thinking clearly, so she forgot that. Without delay, she called Henry's number again, but his phone was still turned off. Perhaps he was carrying out a task. Left with no choice, she could only go back to the city center. In order to not lose Henry, she sent him a text so that he would call her back after he turned on his phone. Henry, this is Ariana. Call me back once you read this message, she said in her text. She wanted to say a lot to him, but it was too hard to explain in a text message. Most importantly, she was worried about whether Henry still remembered her after he traveled back in time. Therefore, it wasn't a good idea if she said too much in the message. Ariana was very afraid that Henry would forget her because she honestly wouldn't know what to do then. Anyway, it was useless to be worried now. She needed to see him first. In case Henry forgot her or didn't call her back after reading her message, she called him every two hours. At 5.30 p.m., she was on her way back to the city center when her phone suddenly rang, and it was Zed. Ariana was in a terrible mood, so she didn't want to pick up Zed's call. She was unwilling to waste time on him now. Did she still hate Zed after traveling back in time? She hated him a little, but didn't hate him to death. After all, she had already taken revenge after her reincarnation. However, that didn't mean that she would tolerate it if he and Naomi dared to mess with her. Her phone continued to ring. Ariana couldn't turn it off because she was worried that she might miss Henry's call. However, if Zed wouldn't stop calling her, Henry wouldn't be able to get through to her because of the busy line. Therefore, Ariana directly blocked Zed's number. About 10 minutes later, Ariana's phone rang again. It was an unknown number, but she felt that it must be Zed. He couldn't get through to her, so he used another number. However, even if it might be Zed, Ariana thought that it could also be Henry, so she still answered it. The moment she picked it up, she heard Zed's angry scolding. Amelia, what's wrong with you? I called you so many times. Why didn't you answer it? I couldn't get through to you afterward. Did you block my number? She wasn't surprised that it turned out to be Zed, but she was disappointed that it wasn't Henry. As a result, she coldly responded, Zed, don't call me again. Leave me alone, or I'm afraid I'll lose control and kill you. Zed was obviously scared by Ariana's words. After a few seconds of silence, he said, Amelia, what did you say? How dare you say that to me? How dare I say that to you? Because I know your real intention, Zed. I'm warning you to stay away from me or I'll really kill you, Ariana threatened, then hung up on him. This time, she really didn't want to see Zed or she might lose control of herself and strangle him. 
She had the same attitude towards Hal, Catherine, and Naomi. After that, Ariana didn't receive a call from Zed again. About 10 minutes later, Hal called her. Obviously, Zed told Hal what she had said to him, and he took action. Ariana was unwilling to answer his call, but she didn't want him to occupy her line, so she picked it up in the end. Amelia, come home tonight. We'll eat together, ordered Hal in a cold voice, without any affection for his daughter. No, I need to deal with something else. Ariana refused outright. She knew it was a treacherous plot, and there was a trap laid for her ahead. She wasn't afraid, but she was in no mood to deal with them. If she went to see them, she might lose control of herself and kill them. After all, after she was reincarnated, it took a lot of effort to take revenge. Now they were alive and standing in front of her, so she would feel that all the hard work she had done was meaningless. What do you need to deal with? Come home now. I need to see you, Hal ordered in a serious tone. Ariana almost swore at him. Without a word, she hung up on him and blocked his number. After a few minutes, Ariana's phone rang again. This time it was Catherine, but Ariana hung up without hesitation. No matter how they called her, she refused to answer their calls. They sent her messages afterwards, trying to threaten her to come back home, but Ariana ignored all of them. When she got back to the city center, it was slightly past 6 o'clock p.m. It was time for dinner, but she didn't have any appetite, so she went straight back to her apartment. However, right after Ariana got out of her car, she was surrounded by five men in black suits, including Zed. Upon seeing Zed, Ariana was mad and had the strong urge to punch him in the jaw. Her mind was in a mess. She didn't realize that Hal would send people to catch her at her apartment after failing to get through to her. Anyway, she was back now, and she didn't think those men could catch her. They were no match for her after all. Zed looked at Ariana, no Amelia, with mixed emotions. Because she had said that she knew his real intentions on the phone, he got anxious and reported it to Hal. They wanted to know whether Amelia had found out something suspicious about them. He believed that he had acted very well in front of her. How could she find out their dirty secrets? Amelia, your father wants to see you, said Zed in a gentle tone as always. However, he came with many bodyguards, which hardly made his words persuasive. Ariana squinted at him and replied, Zed, didn't you hear what I said on the phone? Her voice was icy. She was so strange in Zed's eyes now that he felt frightened facing her. He was only an ordinary man, while Amelia was a professional killer, so ordinary people couldn't bear the pressure she put on them. Zed knew that she was very strong, and that was the reason why he brought several bodyguards with him. Amelia, what happened? Zed asked, trying to sound innocent. Although he guessed that she might have found out their dirty secrets, he wouldn't admit it without an affirmative answer. It seems you won't leave me alone if I don't make it very clear, Ariana sneered. She intended to let him go at first, but he wouldn't leave her alone. If she didn't do something right now, she might miss this great chance to punish him. She put on a vague smile and responded meaningfully. Zed, aren't you trying to keep your position in the Flores family by being together with me? I know Naomi is your real girlfriend. You refuse to make love with me, not because you respect me, but because you don't want to anger Naomi. If she's mad, she'll abandon you and you won't be able to take revenge. Zed turned pale in an instant. Ariana really knew his dirty secret, which even Hal and Naomi were unaware of. The next second, he became aggressive. Since Amelia found out his dirty secret, he couldn't allow her to live. If she told Hal about that, his plan would be totally ruined. Catch her, Zed ordered at once. Those bodyguards were his men, so he could trust them. Even if he killed Amelia, they wouldn't tell Hal. The moment Zed gave the order, the bodyguards rushed forward to catch Ariana. If she were still Amelia before her reincarnation, it might take her some time to beat all of them. However, now she was a different person, and she was much stronger than before. Once she rushed forward, the bodyguards could hardly fight back. Within a minute, they were all beaten up on the ground, without any strength to struggle. Zed backed away in horror when he saw the scene. Since when did Amelia become so strong? He knew that she was a trained fighter, but it turned out that she was much stronger than he thought. 
What? Ariana asked, glaring at him, and walked towards him step by step. Zed was terrified and stepped back with a deathly pale face. W what do you want to do to me? He stammered. Although he could see that she was furious with him, he still hoped that she would let him go. He knew that if Amelia attacked him, he would be injured in a second. What do I want to do to you? I warned you not to mess with me, but you wouldn't listen, Ariana sneered. Amelia, I didn't mean to hurt you. It was your father who ordered me to take you back to your family's house tonight. He told me that if you refuse, I can use violence, Zed explained. Although it was partially true, he wouldn't admit that it was actually his idea to kill Amelia, or he would be doomed. And Amelia, I really love you. I don't understand why you think I'm taking advantage of you. I swear there is nothing going on between me and Naomi, he continued. He even acted hurt, as if he was purely innocent. Don't lie to me. I wasn't born yesterday, Ariana snarled. She didn't bother to waste more time on Zed, and without another word, she rushed forward and attacked him. Zed instinctively fought back, but he was too weak compared with Ariana. Within seconds, she kicked him to the ground. Before he could get back to his feet, she punched and kicked him heavily. She didn't mean to injure him seriously because she had no intention of disabling or killing him. She just wanted to vent her anger on him, so she beat him black and blue. Zed screamed in pain and attracted the attention of other people in the parking lot. However, there were only a few people around. Several people stepped forward because they wanted to help, but they soon figured out that Zed came to cause the woman trouble. Unfortunately for him, the woman beat him instead. Therefore, nobody bothered to stop her. In fact, Ariana looked very violent, so no one dared to stop her anyway. They didn't want her to vent her anger on them. After a while, Ariana stopped. She coldly looked at Zed, who was cowering on the ground, and she warned him, "'Disappear from my sight from now on. Don't ever try to fool me again, or I'll injure you more seriously than I did this time.' As soon as Ariana finished, she got in her car and drove away. She didn't want to go back to her apartment now. She didn't go to stay in a hotel either, but went straight to Mountain River Garden. Although she wasn't sure whether Henry also kept the memories before they traveled back in time, she had to go see him. Normally, Henry would stay in Mountain River Garden when he was back in Los Angeles. She also had a key to the house there, so she decided to go there. She only wanted to find Henry and try to go back to their life. Mountain River Garden was the same before and after she moved in, while Henry's house had the same lock, so Ariana easily opened it and got inside. The layout of the house was what she was familiar with. After Ariana got in, she didn't move anything inside. She just quietly sat on the sofa, looking at her phone, waiting for Henry to call her back. Even though Henry could be gone for days or weeks at a time while he was doing tasks, and she might have to wait for a long time, she still hoped that he would reply to her as soon as possible. Many hours had passed by now, so Gerald and the others back at Eagle Mountain must be very worried about them, and she was even more anxious than them. There were so many people who loved and cared about her and Henry in the world. If they heard that they were missing, they would be heartbroken. Of course, Ariana also considered that what happened in that world might disappear because they traveled back in time. She had no idea what was really happening. While she waited for Henry to come back, she was extremely anxious. She didn't feel sleepy at all and checked her phone once in a while as the hours passed. All of a sudden, at 3 o'clock a.m., Ariana heard a car driving outside the house. The first thought that popped into her mind was that Henry was back, and she immediately used her jade eyes to look out. It was really Henry's car. He stopped it outside the front gate, then got out of it to open the gate before driving towards the house. Ariana hadn't parked her car at the house, but somewhere else. At this moment, she froze, because she couldn't sense the air of an immortal from Henry. It meant that he wasn't an immortal now. In other words, this wasn't the Henry who was already engaged to her. No wonder he didn't call her back. If he was the Henry she knew, he would certainly call her back after the accident happened. He would search for her and make sure that they were safe, and then they would go to Eagle Mountain together to see whether they could go back to their real life. Suddenly, Ariana didn't know how to face Henry, but she had to meet him. She didn't go outside and instead waited for him to come in. The lights were off in the living room, 
but Henry noticed the silhouette of a figure inside the house when he took out his key and was about to open the door. Instantly, he was mad. Who was in his house? He only arranged for his subordinates to clean his house regularly. His subordinate never stayed here, so Henry believed that it wasn't him. Who could it be then? Henry's only option was to walk in to see who the person was. If he left right now, he wouldn't be able to know who was in his house and what the person wanted. Henry walked into the house alertly. He could tell that the person was in the living room, but the person didn't move at all or seem aggressive after he came in. It confused Henry. Who are you? Why are you in my home? He demanded. He didn't turn on the lights. I'm the one who sent you those messages. I need to talk with you about something serious. Don't worry, I have no intention of hurting you, explained Ariana. Then she stood up and walked towards Henry. Although the house was completely dark, she could still see Henry's face clearly. He was as cold looking as when she met him for the first time. Somehow, Ariana was very disappointed. Because Henry felt no hatred from Ariana, he didn't attack her right away. However, he had no idea who she was. She told him that she was the person who sent him messages, but he didn't know a girl named Ariana. He had read the messages earlier, but it was after midnight when he saw them, so he didn't call her back. He decided to do that the next morning. Even though he didn't know this girl named Ariana, since she knew his number and his name, and she said she wanted to talk with him about something serious, he would call her back to see what she wanted. Henry turned on the lights afterward and then saw Ariana, or Amelia to be specific. She was a stranger to him, but he could see that she looked very athletic and strong. How did you get in here? Henry asked as he coldly looked at her. Although Henry glared at her, Ariana remained tender to him. I have my own ways, replied Ariana vaguely. She didn't tell him how she got in because he would be suspicious of his subordinate if she told him that she had a key to his house. Since she refused to tell him, Henry stopped asking about it. He asked her about something else. What do you want to talk to me about? Do you know a girl named Ariana Young? Ariana asked. She figured that she would receive a negative answer, but she was still full of hope. No, I don't, answered Henry in a flat voice. Although Ariana knew that he would say no, she was still upset when she heard it from his mouth. She was unwilling to give up, so she asked, Do you believe in monsters, ghosts, and people with superpowers? Henry frowned. He felt that it was a very strange question, but he still answered, No. Have you ever been to Baltimore? Ariana asked. No, Henry replied. Ariana was more and more disappointed. If I told you that monsters, ghosts, and people with superpowers really exist in this world, and incarnations are real, would you believe it? She asked. Even though Henry wasn't an immortal now, and couldn't recognize Ariana, he was still Ava's son. He had immortal blood in his veins, so Ariana thought that she could talk about things like that with him. Who are you? What are you talking about? This is really strange, responded Henry. He stopped answering Ariana's questions, because her words sounded ridiculous. However, he didn't think that she was crazy, so he somehow felt that what she said might be true. If you want to know who I am, answer my questions, pleaded Ariana. Henry was cold to other people, but he had patience. He actually was much more patient than the average person, because he and his teammates had to wait at the airport for days and nights to catch their target when they carried out a task. It required a lot of patience. Therefore, Henry wasn't mad, just because Ariana didn't tell him right away. He was only used to being cold. Seeing the serious expression on Ariana's face, Henry frowned. Did monsters, ghosts, and people with superpowers really exist in this world? This was the first time that he had ever heard about that, so he was very curious about it. Besides, if they really existed, it would be harmful for the whole society. Therefore, he couldn't stand on the sidelines. He opened his mouth and said, how could I believe your words just like that? If you want to convince me, show me the proof. I can prove it, but you must be prepared, warned Ariana. After a few seconds, she let the mutant fox out of her telepathic eye space. Witnessing the fox show up from nowhere, Henry was stunned. With a single move, Ariana convinced him that supernatural phenomena really existed in this world. 
ordinary people couldn't make a fox come out of nowhere. How did she do it? Was she a monster? Y you Henry stammered as he stared at Ariana. Do you believe it now? Ariana asked gently, but she could see that Henry was convinced by his expression. Yes, Henry admitted. Although it was hard for him to digest the news right now, he still did his best to calm himself down. Well, tell me who you are. What do you want from me? He questioned. It's a long story. I hope you have patience, Ariana began, then continued. Since you now accept that unusual, supernatural phenomena really exist in this world, you should know this world is different from what you believe. The truth is, you'll meet me in a month, and I will actually be another girl by then. I'll die in a month, and my soul will possess the body of a girl named Ariana Young in Baltimore. You'll carry out a task in Baltimore. You'll be injured, and we meet by accident. Henry was shocked. What? Did she just say that they will meet in a month? She will die, and her soul will possess another person's body? The whole thing sounded so unbelievable that Henry could barely believe it. But Ariana just proved right in front of him that unbelievable things were possible. Ariana then revealed, After we meet a few times by chance, we'll fall in love and become boyfriend and girlfriend. They would fall in love? When Henry heard that, he looked at Ariana with mixed emotions, but he had no affection for her. After all, she was only a stranger in his eyes now. Instead, he felt a little embarrassed. At this time, he couldn't imagine that he would ever fall in love. Ariana continued, I know you can't believe my words, but I know everything about you, not just your family background. After all, lots of people know about that, but here's something that not many people know. I know you're the chairman of the innovation group. Only your grandfather is aware of that. Other family members of yours don't even know it. I also know the names of your comrades. They are Gerald, Carl, Sal, Ned. Ariana said the names of Henry's comrades, and Henry became more and more surprised. Only a very few people were aware of that. Your mother, Ava, loves gardening, so your father built Serenity Manor for her. I also know about the Munitioner in Singapore, the Chen family. I know Rodney and Amber, and I also know... Ariana went on to say many things that only Henry or people who were close to him could be aware of. It was nearly impossible for outsiders to know that. Was what she said true? If not, how did she manage to find out all of this information about him? Looking at the serious expression on Ariana's face, he didn't think she was lying. After we're together for more than a year, we'll meet each other's family. Although we're not officially engaged, we plan on getting married. We introduce ourselves as a couple to other people. I have a key to your house, and that's how I got inside. In fact, I also have the key to your house at Greystone Gardens and to your bungalow. As she said that, Ariana took out the key and showed it to Henry. At this time, Henry was more shocked than ever and didn't know what to do. However, he didn't interrupt Ariana and let her continue. Also, your mother isn't dead, Ariana revealed after a moment's hesitation. When Henry heard that, he couldn't stay calm any longer. He immediately blurted out, What? My mother isn't dead? Right, she's alive, but she lost her memories after the accident happened all those years ago. She's been living at the foot of Dower Mountain. By chance, we'll find her and help her get her memories back. In fact, your mother is an immortal. Although she was seriously injured and was about to die that year, she was rescued afterwards. She lost her memories, so she couldn't come back to see you. You inherited her immortal blood, so you're also an immortal. You just need some time, explained Ariana. Wait, my mother is an immortal? And I'm also an immortal? Henry repeated incredulously. He could hardly believe it was true. He knew what an immortal was, but he had only seen them on TV before. He couldn't believe that immortals really existed, let alone that both he and his mother were immortals themselves. Right, and I'm actually an immortal too. We have the same master. His name is Ezekiel, added Ariana. Receiving all this shocking news at once was too much for Henry, so we didn't know what to do or say. After a while, he asked, Since you said we'll meet in a month and all of those things will happen afterwards, why did we meet right now? 
Ariana took a deep breath and answered, That's the ultimate purpose of my coming to you today. Gerald heard rumors of a strange cave in Eagle Mountain. It said that there is a strong wind inside, which can blow people down. After we heard this, we were worried that there might be monsters or ghosts there, so we went to have a look. Because we're immortals, we were able to keep going against the wind. Then we reached a white glowing barrier. We tried to throw stuff at it, but it bounced back. I even joked that the barrier could be a time-traveling tunnel or something. Because we were worried that accidents might happen, we turned around and walked away. However, right as we turned around, we were absorbed by a powerful force. After I woke up, I found that I traveled back in time. I'm back in my previous body now. Ariana continued, I decided to find you first so that we can go to Eagle Mountain together. I want to see whether we can go back to our lives through that barrier. If we disappear just like that, our life might not exist. Even if it still exists, our families and friends will be worried about us. By this point, tears were falling down Ariana's cheeks. She felt very sad. Because Henry didn't know Ariana yet, he felt nothing when she told him that they would become a couple. However, he somehow felt sorry for her when she cried. Sure, I'll go with you, Henry agreed instinctively. He didn't bother to think about the results of what could happen, or whether Ariana lied to him. Actually, he was mostly convinced by her, so he wanted to know whether what she said was true. If she told the truth, and he could travel ahead in time to that year from now, he would be willing to go with her. Ariana's face lit up when Henry agreed. She quickly proposed, Let's go there right now. There won't be any other visitors at night, and we can take action. Henry nodded, and then he drove Ariana to Eagle Mountain. Along the way, they barely talked. After all, they were strangers now, and honestly didn't know what to say. Deep down, however, both of them wanted to talk with each other. Ariana hoped that Henry could remember her by finding out more about what had happened between them. However, he wasn't the Henry she knew right now, and he had no affection for her. She was worried that he might be freaked out if she talked with him about their story. Henry, on the other hand, actually wanted to ask Ariana about what would happen between them. He also wanted to see whether he would remember her. After thinking about it for a while, however, he felt it might be a little sensitive to bring up those topics. He didn't want to make Ariana more upset. Therefore, neither of them said anything. Henry's house at Mountain River Garden wasn't very close to Eagle Mountain, but there was little traffic on the road late at night, so they soon arrived. Eagle Mountain was very scary late at night. It was pitch dark, and wild animals howled in the distance. If ordinary people came, they would certainly be frightened and wouldn't dare to go further. However, Ariana and Henry weren't bothered. They hiked up the mountain at their fastest speed. Once they reached the main cave, they went into it without a pause. Although Henry was mostly convinced by Ariana, he still had doubts. However, when he felt the wind in the cave and noticed that the wind was getting stronger, he gave up some of his doubts. It was indeed abnormal for there to be such a strong wind in a cave. He also had the idea that it might be a publicity stunt created by the National Park Service to attract visitors. However, if it was really a publicity stunt, it would only be done during the day when there were visitors, or it would be pointless. When they went to the place where the steel bars were welded, Henry was shivering in the icy wind. After all, the current Henry wasn't an immortal, and his physical fitness was naturally not as strong. Ariana was also worried about that. Henry wasn't an immortal now. Could he get in? No matter what, they had to try. If he couldn't push against the strong wind, she would tell him to go out. Whatever happened, she wouldn't allow any accidents to happen to him. How do we get in? Henry asked. Looking at the welded cave and frowning slightly, they didn't have the tools to open it now. Leave it to me, replied Ariana, and a dagger appeared in her hand. She put magical energy into it and cut the steel bars in an instant. Henry was shocked again when he witnessed that. He didn't expect the dagger to be sharp enough to cut through steel. Upon second thought, it couldn't be the effect of this dagger, so Ariana must be very strong. She said that she was an immortal, so it should be easy for her to cut open the steel bars. After that, Henry followed Ariana inside the windy cave. 
As they walked ahead, Henry felt it was becoming more and more difficult for him to move forward. Ariana stood in front of him to protect him from the strong wind. Are you all right? Henry asked. Although he felt a little uneasy with a woman protecting him, he didn't take Ariana lightly. He knew that there were many strong women out there, and he had worked with many of them in the army. In addition, Ariana wasn't an ordinary person. She was an immortal, so it was very normal that she was stronger than him. At this time, Ariana could still press forward against the strong wind with relative ease, while he could barely take a step. Therefore, in order to not be a burden on her, Henry could only hide behind her. Thanks to her help, Henry could go farther ahead. However, Ariana could only block half of the wind because she was shorter and smaller than him. As a result, as they went further ahead, it was increasingly difficult for Henry to move forward. So Ariana decided to help him by pulling his hand. Henry instinctively wanted to get rid of her hand, but Ariana insisted. The wind is becoming stronger. I must hold you tightly. When Henry heard that, he didn't get rid of her, but he soon got used to it. Perhaps because Ariana told him that they were a couple in the future. He only felt a little awkward, but he had to tolerate it in order to keep on going ahead. Ariana pulled Henry ahead, so it became difficult for her as well. But she wouldn't give up. She was determined to go back to their life in the future. She wanted Henry to be the same Henry she knew. Right as they struggled to step forward, they finally saw the sparkling barrier, which was only 30 feet away from them. After a glance at the magical-looking barrier, Henry was shocked and was more convinced by Ariana's words. He also hoped that the barrier would work so that he could travel in time with Ariana. Even though he knew nothing about himself in that year and could barely imagine it, he sincerely hoped that they could go back to their life. However, when they were 15 feet away from the barrier, a person showed up in front of them. It was Henry, and he was still wearing the same clothes he was wearing when they were absorbed into the barrier. Ariana was struck dumb for a second, then her face lit up. Henry, she called out. The Henry whom Ariana was pulling along was astonished. Seeing the man who looked exactly the same as him, he realized that the man must be him in that year. Ariana, let him go. Leave with me. We can't stay here too long, Henry said to Ariana, standing in front of the barrier. Do we need to send him back? Ariana asked, gesturing to the Henry from the past, whom she was still holding on to. For some reason, she had a strange feeling that the past Henry would be in trouble once she let him go. No need. What happens here is the past. It doesn't matter. As long as we enter this barrier, everything in this place will become the past, explained Henry. That made sense to Ariana, so she nodded and started to let the past Henry go. But he turned to catch her hand. Ariana was surprised and turned to look at him. Before she could say anything, he said, I think there is something wrong with him. He was looking at the Henry standing in front of the barrier. He couldn't tell why, but he just had a feeling that something was wrong. Ariana was taken aback. There was something wrong with Henry? How was it possible? Ariana, let him go right now. Come over here. We must leave as soon as possible, Henry urged her, sounding anxious. All of a sudden, Ariana also felt that he looked very strange. Was there really something wrong with him? After they were closer, Ariana greeted Ava. Nice to see you, Miss Bulbous. I'm Ariana Young. She introduced herself. Nice to see you too, Miss Young, said Ava, but she couldn't help glancing at Henry standing next to her. Somehow, she felt this man looked very familiar, but he seemed so young. He looked like he was in his earlier mid-twenties. If she just recognized his face, it wouldn't be a big deal, because they might have met before and she couldn't remember. However, the point was that she felt there were tender feelings between them. How could that be possible? Henry noticed that Ava was sizing him up. He looked calm on the surface, but he was actually quite excited in his heart because she was his mother. She had only lost her memories. Ariana had told him that immortals could live longer, especially immortals at high levels. They could stay young forever. Because Ava was at a high level, she seemed to be in her early 30s. Therefore, Henry didn't have doubts when he saw that Ava looked much younger than he thought she should. In addition, he found that she closely resembled the woman in his memories. 
Most importantly, he had a strange feeling that they were very close. Only mother and son could have such a close bond. Miss Volbus, do you think he looks familiar? Ariana asked in a meaningful tone. Ava came back to her senses, but didn't reply to Ariana right away. She stared straight at her, trying to figure out her purpose from her expression. However, she couldn't see any malice in her face. Ariana must either be good at acting, or she really had no evil purpose. However, Ava still didn't answer Ariana's question. Instead, she asked, When can you tell me the truth of the accident that happened years ago? I can tell you about it right now, offered Ariana. She wasn't worried that Ava might back out of helping her once she found out what she wanted to know, because she had spent some time with Ava and knew that she always kept her promises. Thus, she was willing to trust her. Aren't you afraid I'll leave and won't help you deal with your enemy if you tell me right now? Ava asked, sounding surprised that Ariana was willing to trust her. Actually, since Ava asked that question, it proved that she was an honest person. I know you, and I think I can trust you. If you really decide not to help me, it only means that you don't believe me, Ariana pointed out. If Ava wouldn't help her deal with the fake Henry, Ariana wouldn't blame her. She would only think that Ava didn't believe her. After all, she was just a stranger to Ava, and it would be understandable if she didn't believe her. Therefore, even if Ava didn't help her, she wouldn't complain about it. Ava said nothing further after she heard Ariana's answer. Although she wasn't sure whether she would get along with Ariana in the future, she wouldn't regret coming to meet her as long as Ariana told the truth. If you don't mind, we can talk about it while we climb up the trail. The person I'm going to deal with is in a cave up the mountain, explained Ariana. No problem, agreed Ava. After that, the three of them started hiking up the mountain. As they walked, Ariana said to Ava, Because you didn't want to stay in the world of immortals, you left and met a man named Christopher Ortiz. Ariana quickly recounted to Ava how she met Christopher, fell in love with him, then got married afterwards. Because Ariana didn't know many details, she only told her a brief story. Ava was shocked to know that she actually had a husband and a son. Unfortunately, her husband died in the accident years ago. Where is my son now? Ava asked in a hurry. This is your son. His name is Henry, revealed Ariana. Hearing that, Ava was struck dumb. She immediately turned to look at Henry. He was her son? In an instant, she had mixed emotions. No wonder she felt there was a close bond between them. Unexpectedly, he was her son. At this moment, Henry couldn't stay quiet any longer. He blurted out, You look exactly the same as my mother. You only look younger. Ariana told me that you're an immortal at a high After they were closer, Ariana greeted Ava. Nice to see you, Miss Bulbous. I'm Ariana Young. She introduced herself. Nice to see you too, Miss Young, said Ava, but she couldn't help glancing at Henry standing next to her. Somehow, she felt this man looked very familiar, but he seemed so young. He looked like he was in his earlier mid-twenties. If she just recognized his face, it wouldn't be a big deal, because they might have met before and she couldn't remember. However, the point was that she felt there were tender feelings between them. How could that be possible? Henry noticed that Ava was sizing him up. He looked calm on the surface, but he was actually quite excited in his heart, because she was his mother. She had only lost her memories. Ariana had told him that immortals could live longer, especially immortals at high levels. They could stay young forever. Because Ava was at a high level, she seemed to be in her early 30s. Therefore, Henry didn't have doubts when he saw that Ava looked much younger than he thought she should. In addition, he found that she closely resembled the woman in his memories. Most importantly, he had a strange feeling that they were very close. Only mother and son could have such a close bond. Miss Volbus, do you think he looks familiar? Ariana asked in a meaningful tone. Ava came back to her senses, but didn't reply to Ariana right away. She stared straight at her, trying to figure out her purpose from her expression. However, she couldn't see any malice in her face. Ariana must either be good at acting, or she really had no evil purpose. However, Ava still didn't answer Ariana's question. Instead, she asked, When can you tell me the truth of the accident that happened years ago? I can tell you about it right now, offered Ariana. She wasn't worried that Ava might back out of helping her once she found out what she wanted to know, 
because she had spent some time with Ava and knew that she always kept her promises. Thus, she was willing to trust her. Aren't you afraid I'll leave and won't help you deal with your enemy if you tell me right now? Ava asked, sounding surprised that Ariana was willing to trust her. Actually, since Ava asked that question, it proved that she was an honest person. I know you, and I think I can trust you. If you really decide not to help me, it only means that you don't believe me, Ariana pointed out. If Ava wouldn't help her deal with the fake Henry, Ariana wouldn't blame her. She would only think that Ava didn't believe her. After all, she was just a stranger to Ava, and it would be understandable if she didn't believe her. Therefore, even if Ava didn't help her, she wouldn't complain about it. Ava said nothing further after she heard Ariana's answer. Although she wasn't sure whether she would get along with Ariana in the future, she wouldn't regret coming to meet her as long as Ariana told the truth. If you don't mind, we can talk about it while we climb up the trail. The person I'm going to deal with is in a cave up the mountain, explained Ariana. No problem, agreed Ava. After that, the three of them started hiking up the mountain. As they walked, Ariana said to Ava, Because you didn't want to stay in the world of immortals, you left and met a man named Christopher Ortiz. Ariana quickly recounted to Ava how she met Christopher, fell in love with him, then got married afterwards. Because Ariana didn't know many details, she only told her a brief story. Ava was shocked to know that she actually had a husband and a son. Unfortunately, her husband died in the accident years ago. Where is my son now? Ava asked in a hurry. This is your son. His name is Henry, revealed Ariana. Hearing that, Ava was struck dumb. She immediately turned to look at Henry. He was her son? In an instant, she had mixed emotions. No wonder she felt there was a close bond between them. Unexpectedly, he was her son. At this moment, Henry couldn't stay quiet any longer. He blurted out, You look exactly the same as my mother. You only look younger. Ariana told me that you're an immortal at a high level, so you can stay young for a long time. Because Ava had no memory of her marriage and son, she had stayed alone for the past years. Now her son suddenly showed up, and she didn't know what to say or do all of a sudden. However, she had no intention of pushing Henry away. Instead, she felt quite comforted. Still, she had no memories of him, so she apologized. I'm sorry, I can't remember anything about you. Henry's biological mother was right in front of him now, but she couldn't remember him. It was painful, so Ava apologized to him. She felt bad about it. Never mind, replied Henry. He understood that it wasn't easy for Ava to digest the shocking news within a short time, so he didn't urge her. He only felt a little sad because it was such a twist of fate. After composing herself, Ava asked, Why did Christopher and I get in that accident? She always wanted to know why she was injured, but Felix only told her that she would be killed if she dared to enter the world of immortals again. She believed that she must have messed with someone, and the person who wanted her dead must be at a higher level than her. She was probably no match for that person, so she stayed out of the world of immortals. Although she was a member of the Bulbous family, the Bulbous family had a very important and stable position in the world of immortals. She was only an unimportant daughter in the family, so her father wouldn't stand up for her against anyone. However, it seemed more complicated than she thought. You fell in love with a mortal, which was against the rules in the world of immortals. So your father got mad and ordered that you two be killed, explained Ariana sadly. What? Ava gasped in shock. Her enemy turned out to be her father. She was surprised, but didn't think it was impossible, because her father was very cruel. Henry, on the other hand, was astonished. He couldn't believe that it was his so-called grandfather who ordered the killing of his father and mother. I'm not lying, and your cousin Felix is aware of the truth. If you want to make sure of it, you can ask him, suggested Ariana. After knowing the truth, both Henry and Ava were in a bad mood. Only after they silently hiked for a long while did they finally feel better. After that, Ariana told Ava what had happened after she traveled back in time. Ava thought about it and theorized, Since you say you traveled back in time through a barrier, Everything here might not really exist. It might just be an illusion you intruded into. That's my guess, and I'm not sure of it, 
but I think it's highly likely. An illusion? Ariana repeated, suddenly feeling like that might be true. It wasn't easy to travel back in time after all. Entering an illusion made more sense. I think you're right, but if it's really an illusion, what should I do now? She asked. Ariana understood what an illusion was, but she knew very little about how to deal with them. It was still a strange thing for her. There is an entrance and exit to each illusion. As long as you can find the entrance, you can get back to your life. I think the barrier you just mentioned could be both the entrance and exit, guessed Ava. She wasn't sure, but it was very likely to be the answer. Then I guess we have to go back to the barrier, decided Ariana. That was her plan anyway. Although Ava just met her son and had to watch him leave right now, she knew he and Ariana couldn't stay here if it was really an illusion. Because an illusion could continue to change and cause trouble, it would torture people and drive them crazy. After they went crazy, they would die. If Ariana and Henry died, what would their families and friends in their real timeline do? Ava would suffer the pain of losing her son in the future. Therefore, no matter how reluctant she was, she had to do her best to help them get out of there. They went to the cave again and walked along the winding trails until they reached the windy section. Although Ariana already told her there was a wind in the cave, Ava still felt it was strange when she felt it herself. After all, this was the first time that she had ever experienced such a thing. After a while, they reached the place where the steel bars were welded. Because Ariana and Henry connected the steel bars before they left earlier, no one found out that they had been cut through. However, instead of welding it again, they simply glued it together with super glue so they could easily take it apart this time with a little force. Therefore, Ariana went directly to take down the broken steel bars, then they got in. Because Ava was in the yin-yang stage, the wind barely bothered her, while Henry could only stand behind her. Due to Ava's help, it was much easier for them to get closer to the barrier. The fake Henry was still standing there when they arrived. As soon as he saw Ariana coming back, his face lit up. Ariana, you're finally here. I've been waiting for you for so long. Let's go back now, he urged. It seemed as if nothing had happened before. He truly looked like he was the real Henry. He was so good at acting that Ariana was almost convinced. But in the end, it was impossible for her to believe him. If he was the real Henry, he wouldn't have no reaction when he saw Ava. Stop acting. I don't believe you, said Ariana coldly. Ariana, what happened? I'm not acting. Did something go wrong? I don't want you to misunderstand me, protested Henry, looking a little hurt. It made Ariana feel that he might be the real Henry. However, he was the fake Henry, and that wouldn't be changed. If Ariana was an ordinary girl, she might have been convinced by him, but she wasn't. Do you think I'm an idiot? She sneered. Ariana, stop arguing. We should go back right now. We've been gone for so long. Gerald and the others must be very anxious, he pleaded, not seeming angry at all in the face of Ariana's mockery. If you want me to believe that you're the real Henry, let the sea monster out now, ordered Ariana. Hearing that, the fake Henry became angry in an instant. He let out a cry of rage and rushed forward to attack Ariana right away. Leave him to me. Seize your chance and go through the barrier, instructed Ava, then immediately went to fight with the fake Henry. The fake Henry obviously was no match for Ava, so she soon controlled him. At this time, Ariana pulled the real Henry forward and rushed to the barrier. Before they crossed through, the two turned back and gave Ava a glance, then ran into the barrier. However, it didn't quite work the way Ariana planned. She successfully passed through the barrier, but Henry bounced away the second he touched it. Inside the glowing white of the barrier, Ariana was scared. She instinctively wanted to catch Henry, but everything in her sight suddenly disappeared, and so did the barrier. Even though she wanted to go back, she couldn't see how. Now, she was sure that she and Henry had entered an illusion. She didn't actually travel in time back to the days before her reincarnation. The Henry from the past, however, didn't make it through the barrier. Did that mean that he wasn't the Henry who traveled back in time with her? Ariana felt it was possible. That would explain why he didn't have any of his memories and abilities from the present while she did. Because of that, 
Ariana didn't feel upset when the past Henry failed to go through the barrier with her. The question was, where was Henry right now? Did he go into another illusion by himself? Ariana thought that must be the answer.